Well, hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide. And this time we are getting it all in Kentucky Route Zero. Now, this was developed by Cardboard Computer, published by Annapurna Interactive, and is available usually for £20.99. But right now it's free on Xbox Game Pass, so you know the drill, make money and then spend it on Game Pass. So we play as a few people, an aging delivery driver making one last delivery for a bad antique shop, a woman who fixes TV surrounded by ghosts, and a kid who has a giant eagle as a companion, which is of course usually what happens in the real world. Uh, so that's the game basically, but of course we're going to go through a lot of different acts, a lot of places and things and things and etc and etc. Now as for achievements, we will get 5 for completing all 5 acts, 5 for completing the small act after the main act, and a whole bunch of missables, but there is one very important one. So there's an achievement for playing on a Tuesday, it's like one small section of the game needs us to play on a Tuesday. Don't worry if you're not playing on a Tuesday though, we can go offline, change the day, and we'll do it that way. Otherwise the missables are easy enough, I'll always let you know, because that's the kind of guy I am, right? Oh, also, we have to play Act 4 twice, which is just damn annoying, to be honest. So, if you can follow the guide, you're looking at around 5 or so hours to complete this, maybe a touch longer. So, with that being said, then, let us begin. So, you can just, what we're going to do is go into the settings first. We're actually just going to make the text sudden and then nice and big. Now, I might as well just tell you, there is a lot, and I mean a crap, crap ton of dialogue in this game. So a lot of the times, you will just be holding the B button to skip most of the dialogue, pressing A to uh, just pick whatever. By the way, you can pick whatever you want there. They're just basically the saves. So I just pick the left one, the notebook, and then we can just launch Act 1 and get into it. So, as I was saying... There's a lot and an absolute crap ton of dialogue, so, um, and a lot of the choices don't actually matter in the game. I'll obviously let you know which choices do matter and when we get there, etc. But a lot of the time we can just hold the B button to go through the dialogue, press the A button to pick the top option, hold B, press A, hold B, press A, because as I said, man, there's a lot of talking. Christ, I didn't know people could talk for this long. But apparently that's true. I mean, uh, just have a look at reality TV shows these days, they just stink up the air with the amount of crap they talk. So, uh, move to the left with the left stick, and then when you get here, press the right stick to um, either look at the attendant or speak to him. We're going to speak to the attendant. So again, press and hold the B button, and the dialogue will fly through quickly. And then uh, what we can do is pick our dog's name, so you can either call him Homer or Blue. I call him Homer because, uh, you know, many reasons, many reasons, but anyway... Um, so we can just keep on slamming through the dialogue. So again, we're going to hold the B button, and for the moment, we are just going to uh, ask it. We're just going to keep picking the top option. So again, we'll be doing this <laughs> quite a lot through the game. And then when the conversation ends, you can tell with the X button there. So he get here. So for some reason, all we want is some petrol, and he's making us do a job. That's quite douchebag river. So go to the left, go down to the basement. You can click the A button when it says, as you can see, the arrow down. You can click the A button when you get there. And we're going to head down into the basement. Go to the right, and there are a bunch of um, basement people here, which... Please don't eat my face! I need it to live! And to look pretty. Um, so, again, what you can do is just uh, keep slamming through the dialogue again, holding the B button to go through the dialogue, and then just press the A button on the top option for now. Or the dot dot dots. There we go, and then what we need to do now is go to the right, jump down, click on the sign, your lamp will go off, turn it back on. Um, it might not always go off though, it went off with me for some reason. So, uh, turn your lamp on, go to the sign, and then pick up the um, dice, the dice piece, the Retrieve the Glowing Game piece. Well, there's nothing else to do in the basement except eat people's faces and watch stuff you're probably not supposed to be watching. And I suppose if you're Putin, uh, you know, start a war for some reason, because you're a douchebag. He's just, he's hiding in a basement somewhere, okay? Anyway, when you grab the game piece, you can either give it back to the people, or we can just go to the right, to the breaker. Interact with the breaker again by pressing the A button, and that is that. And as it turns out, those basement people uh, have gone, so they were probably dead people. Cool, cool, great start. Fantastic start. It's a pretty cool horse, mind. That would be a petrol station that I would stop at with a big horse. Right, go over to the attendant again, and he's going to direct us to his office computer. Now we have to say a few things. Uh, specific dialogue options. So again, we're going to just smash through it here. 
and there she blows. And then what we're going to do is go in to the left again, go onto the computer. And then what we have to do is we have to pick a, a specific set of dialogue options, like I said. So choose Joseph. And this time you can actually choose any password. So as long as your login is Joseph. Oh, let's see. Uh, what have we got on this computer? Right. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm going to call the police. Right. We need to select the address book. So the second option there, the address book. And then select Marquez. So the third option down there, Marquez. And then we've got a copy of the directions which should be placed in our notes. Which if you ever want to see your notes, you can just press the Y button to open them up. Um, I don't throughout the game, but there is a lot... I'm obviously going just smashing through the game just to get all the achievements, by the way. Um, but there's a lot more you can actually search for and have a look at. Now, before going into your van, speak to your dog, Homer slash Blue. Choose, how's it going, Homer slash Blue. Then choose, how about a treat? How about a treat? How about we get the police on this uh, weird old gas attendant here? And then choose, here's some jerky from the gas station attendant. And then you, from here, you can just choose whatever you want. And then basically what that's going to do is get us the first achievement. I bet a dog will eat it. Uh, uh, no worries, Mr. Man. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be back in just a bit with the police, you freak. God damn. Right. And eventually, now for some reason, it took about 30 seconds for the achievement to unlock originally. I edited it down some. But just wait until, again, that's what I would do. Um, if your achievement doesn't unlock yet, just wait until it unlocks. Then choose the truck option, the driving option, and then Conway doesn't want to stay here much longer. Right. For this next bit, pressing the left stick will move us in a specific direction. So what we're going to do is head up on Interstate 65 and then go... We're going to go to the left, <laughs> just having a little uh, jizz jazz right here. So next to the burning tree here, go to the left and go to the Marquez farmhouse. So it's a farm with a big Z underneath it. Uh, but yeah, that, that one's kind of a, a weird one. I thought it was an automatic thing, so I was just waiting for it to work for ages until I uh, realized I was being moronical, <laughs> as is the per usuals. So we're at the Marquez farm and housing trousen. And then what we have to do... No, <coughs> oh god damn, excuse me, that's, that was curvy. Now, again, a lot of the, not only do we have a lot of dialogue, obviously, especially uh, during the later acts, they make us walk like hell, like, bruh, why didn't you just drive up to the house? That would just make things a lot easier, but you can press up on the D-pad or left, go up, and then what we're going to do is speak to Weaver, who is this, like, I mean, I don't know if she's, is she supposed to be the sort of epitome of a nerd girl? I, I don't know. Interact with the li uh, the lig switch. Yes. Interact with the ligma. Um, <laughs> uh, ligma. Anyway, what we can do? We're just going to spam once again through the dialogue, so you can pick any particular dialogue options you want. So you just keep uh, holding the B button, then press A, B button, then press A to pick whatever you want. Blah blah blah. And then we'll just keep going for the time being. And that's the end of that chapter. So Weaver disappears. Uh, well, screw you, that's fine. That's fine, just fine. I'll, <laughs> I'll get your money off somewhere else. So, uh, Conway right here, who just re he reminds you of the cute little sort of 70-year-old man. 
Does he? Uh, is there any cute old men out there? Why am I freaking asking? Right, we'll just completely ignore that question, and we're going to start heading down all, <laughs> all the way back to the truck. Um, now, from this point, what you're going to hear is a nice bit of music, but I've actually muted it just in case um, of any copyright issues, because you know what some games are like? God damn, they love to just smack your balls with a bloody copyright. Oh, look at that, you played one second of guitar. Give me all your money. <laughs> Up your guts, pal. Up your guts. But we're going to head all the way down. Again, you can keep speaking to Homer if you want, but we're going to get through the game as quick as you can, so we can just head back. And then what we're going to do is drive back to the horse oils, Equus oils. So go to the right, and then on the main road, the big white chunky main road, uh, if you can, just head all the way back down to the horse icon, which is Equus, or Equus oils. However the hell you're going to say that. And then what we're going to do is, there's going to be another guy here. We need to speak to the strange-ass guy. He's wearing antlers because, why not? What's wrong with um, walking around wearing antlers? There's men and women, you know, in that kinky stuff, who the, the man sticks a collar and, on the woman and pretends she's a dog, so why not wear antlers? So, choose to talk to Joseph and Stranger anyway. Uh, basically, we're going to learn... That he is a playwright named o Carrington. <laughs> that also gets us the Finding Carrington achievement. Uh, but again, for dialogue options, smash through like a like a good pasty. Yeah, yeah. So, is Carrington a really posh name? I, I suppose it is. Hey, hello, darling. I'm a playwright named Carrington. But basically, you actually have to speak to him now. This this enables us to get the final interlude after Act 5 to get us an achievement. So it's very important that you actually speak to him here. But again, slap through. Slap through that dialogue like a bit of bass guitar. Get back into your truck. And now what you can do, you can actually do some optional exploration if you wanted. There's a lot of places that you can actually go and take a look in. But what we're going to do again is just follow the main story just to smash through it a bit quicker. So we're heading up. Up, up, and basically going to the northeast corner of the map. So past the burning tree, past this number 65. And then we're going, whoop, going all the way up. And then where the factory is, and now we're going to turn right. And then right again until we see the on-ramp. The on-ramp. Or if you want to call it backwards, it's Pomarno. Pomarno. Sounds like a bad, disgusting cheese. Or a nice Italian town. Either way, what we're going to do, we're into the Elkhorn Valley. What we're going to do here um, is just head inside. Okay, there we go. So go to the right, and this is the shortest scene in history. Because as soon as we hit the entrance... Oh, look at that. We're on to the next scene already. <laughs> God damn, that was quick. So what we're going to do, we're going to find Shannon, who is our next main compatriot of the entire game. Um, again, you're just going to go through a lot of dialogue, smash through all the dialogue that you see fit, just keep holding the B button, press the A button, just smash through it quick as you can, then they're eventually going to have a little walk deeper into the mine and test the PA system, so for now, just keep slapping that bass guitar titty bag like a bass guitar titty bag through the dialogue. <laughs>
Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, I can smell you from here, bro. You need a shower. Testing, testing. <coughs> Get my bath. Right, anyway. When we get here then, we've had the unfortunate accident um, with Connell's, Connell's ways. Now we need to escape from Elkhorn Mine. By the way, a lot of the gameplay is very simplistic, so there's nothing, like, too complicated or anything. Um, so, you know, don't panic. In fact, in fact, nothing about it is hard. You're just going to wait a lot. Which is fine, just fine, except, god damn, it gets a little boring sometimes. So... There you go, Shannon to the right. Conway's like, well, if I was eight years younger and you were eight years older, and a goddamn girl, I'd like to take you for an early bird special at a, an American restaurant, which I don't know what they are because I'm not American. So uh, we're just heading to the left anyway for now, so press and hold the left stick. If you want to see a couple of surprises, you can press the A button to turn off your lamp. Generally, the surprises are that, uh, like, little shadows are just walking around in the foreground. Nothing much or anything at all. So we're going to stop here then by the turn tabler. So stop by the turn tabler. And again, what, what you can also do for more optional exploration, you can actually switch the tracks. You can explore other areas of the mine if you want and learn some more backstory. Uh, but again, we're not just going to do that. So stop at the turntable. Um, slam out once again through all the dialogue. So, after the dialogue's done, Conway's still thinking, I hey, want to take you for an early bird special, but we're just going to head to the left, uh, to the right, sorry, to the right, of course. No, no, damn it, to the right. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> I got there eventually. Now we are going to choose for the next dialogue option, we're going to choose one specific one. And this is for an achievement called Hypnagogic. Hypnagogic? Hypnagogic. I, I don't know what, uh, how it's pronounced, but we are getting a miserable achievement here anyway. So keep on heading to the right. Again, if you turn off your lamp, you can see the creepy shadow people in the background. But since we're there, go to the exit. Now choose anything for Conway, but for Shannon, choose... If you wait for me here, I'll go and take another look around. So now choose the second option. If you wait for me, if you wait for me here, I'll just go take another look around. Kind of sounds like a crappy band boy um, uh, song, doesn't it? So, Shannon's off. Conway's like, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, see you in a minute. Yeah. Because apparently that's how all old people talk now. Now, what you need to do as Shannon, turn her towards you, the player, and then just wait here for a couple of minutes. So you need to rotate her so she's directly facing us, the, the player, the legends, the sex guards. And then we just need to wait until the hum really intensifies loud and the colour, a lot of colours radiate from the lantern. So, basically, I mean, this just takes literally sort of 40 seconds to around a minute. Um, I'm not sure when the exact point is, but you can just wait until I am in your command. Yes, I can go and poop on somebody's chest for a laugh and run away. Yes, I can get rid of my peepee -pee to never have another kid ever again. Two is more than enough, thank you. Yes, I can shove something up my nose for a ja Okay, well, blah, 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 blah. right, turn it around anyway. When it gets sort of, you know, that humming I mean, gets really intensifying and the colors start going all types of crazy, turn her away and that gets the hypnagogic achievement uh, going. Um, d did I just, did I say something just now? <laughs> Yeah, it's probably nothing anyway, and I can't be asked to look what I said. So go to the right, selecting the helmets at the end of the tunnel, and then uh, basically we're going to see Conway limping out. I really feel like I did say just something, but uh, yeah, who knows. Anyway, we've got our, um, our missable achievement. Obviously, if you didn't get the achievement, just do it again and, you know, turn around, just sort of leave it a minute. Should be fine, should be fine, just fine. So cut off Conway limps. <coughs> Not even his third leg can save him this time. So, we are going to pick any dialogue option we want once again here. And then we're just going to get back on the road. And in fact, we're almost done with the first act now. So, 
So click back the truck or the steering wheel option of course and then all we're going to do now is just return to the Marquez farmhouse. Merc Marquez. Well, how did he? Now nah, back in the 50s I was a swinging guy. I don't know. However old people talk about what they used to do back in the 50s. So go back into the main chunky road and start heading down. Of course the Marquez farmhouse is the uh, farmhouse on the left next to the burning tree with a big Z underneath it. So all we need to do then is just return here and then, well, what, again what you can do if you wanted to do any more optional exploration. Be my chicken breast, be my guest, you can uh, crack on with that. But when we get here to the Marquez farmhouse, all we're going to do is slowly... And, and when I say slowly, I mean, trust me, it's goddamn slow. I know you got a bit of a limp, like, but, I, I mean, just ride your dog. That's what dogs are built for, right? So you can ride on their back, like a, like a horse. Except, no, because dogs, dogs are better than horses. So we slowly limp all the way up the hill. We're going to go inside the house, and, we're just, and Shannon's going to fix the TV. And then something spooky is going to happen. And then the Act 1 achievement, will she be done? Will she be done? Yeah, she will be done. Oh, boys, we have found it. We have found the Route Zero, so from Kentucky, we're going to head start heading to the Route Zero. But what we're going to do first, now, after every act, you'll see this. Uh, it'll be a different one, so you've got limits and demonstrations first. So we're going to play this. This is basically what the sort of uh, the interludes they called, yeah. So the sort of small act after the big act. 
but this is a very short one. So what you can do, when we start, you can walk to the left, have a look at all the different pieces of art, which basically give us indication and clues about um, the uh, upcoming characters in the next chapters. Or what you can do is walk to the right until we see the exit sign. There it is. And now we can just press the exit right there. Um, so again, again, if you want to have a look at more story, be my guest, be my chicken breast, take a look around, that's fine. But we're just going to head straight for the exit anyway. And that's going to give us the Limits and Demonstrations achievement. So now we're on to Act 2. So see, we got through that rather quickly. It's only the last couple of acts which take the goddamn longest. But we're going to play the second one. And all we're doing, we are now playing as Lula for a minute. So again, any dialogue option you completely want. We're going to speak to Carrington. Uh, Carrington the fourth extraordinaire. Uh, but again, just keep hold of the B button. Press the A button, hold the B button. Do all the jazz you can to smash your big old nutbags through all of this dialogue. Hello, dear. My name's Carrington. Mrs. Bucket, Mrs. Bouquet. Right, so what we can do now is Conway, we can simply limp our way to the left. Come on, mate. You had a little tiny stone fall on your leg. Come on. Get a grip, mate. Uh, we're going to interact with the bell. And then what we're going to do... It's kind of funny. It looks like we're outside, but we're kind of inside. Why is the reception on the outside? That'll be a pain in the ass if it's raining and snowing. Uh, speak to the receptionist, and then what she's going to do, uh, again, we smash through all of the dialogue, and she's going to leave for a bit before coming back. So, cheers, Big Mazza. She indicates that uh, we need to go to the fourth floor or some kind of first floor. Uh, now, what you can do, this is just optional exploration. There's a bunch of books here. What you can do is pick them up. Um, basically, this just gives us a brochure with instructions on how to access hidden locations along the Route Zero. Um, so, if you ever want to look at them, just press the Y button to bring up your notes. Slash Ephemera, I think that's called. Man, my English is... Real terrible today. Right, go into the elevator anyway. Um, but again, that's just, the books there is if you just want to look at hidden routes along the route zero. Otherwise, we're just going to crack on because I don't actually do that. So, we're going to ignore Shannon's suggestion. So, just like a couple, we're already ignoring each other. Nice. We are going to go to the first floor, which is the clerk's office. Now, this next missable achievement is... A pain and it's not a pain because it's difficult to do it just takes the freaking piss at how long it is to do and I'll tell you why so we're going to get a reading off pickle Rick right here hey I turned myself into a pickle it's comedy gold buddy 
so after Rick's, Rick's greeting here, what you need to do is go all the way to the right and speak to Clerk Metstein. Now, what you have to do is never pick any of Shannon's dialogue. Always make sure to pick the top option, which would be Conway's dialogue, okay? So this is for the Miserable Achievement. Do not choose a any for Shannon. So we're just going to keep picking the top option again, which will always be Conway. And then what's going to happen is, Clerk Metzlein is going to send us over to the left to talk to um, Clerk Douchebag. Uh, Cl Clerk Bomb, sorry. And then he's just going to go through the same thing. By the way, happy to help. Why do anyone in sales and anyone in restaurants and anyone who ha who actually says happy to help lies? Nobody's happy to help. They just want to go home and eat stuff and enjoy life. And then what we need to do then, after you click again, Conway's option, you need to go to the back, choose Clerk McMillan. And then she's going to say a whole bunch of crap and then go, happy to help. Oh, happy to help. <laughs> I'm so happy to help. You're about as happy to help as a kick to the nuts. So again... Remember to always choose Conway's option. And this is where the achievement starts then. So, the achievement says, uh, follow the bureaucratic loop in the bureau three times. Don't piss and believe that. That's all just a lie. This took at least ten minutes of going from Metstein to Bomb to Macmillan. Never ending. Always saying Conway's options. This took at least 10 minutes for it to finally unlock. But this is all you have to do then to unlock the Paperclip Labyrinth achievement. So just go to all three clerks, always picking Conway's options, which will always be the top one anyway, until the achievement unlocks. But again, get ready to do this for at least 10 minutes. I've obviously edited it down a little bit. So, you know, just be aware of that. So just um, press pause right here and that's of course it works for you first time which would be nice but if it doesn't just make sure to press the pause button get the paper clip <laughs> paper clip labyrinth achievement before moving on that's a pain in the old bum snatch but a lot of rare achievements this time which would be good right when we speak to the next person now we can choose shannon's option which is we've come here for lula and then they just tell us she's the girl in the red coat anyway which is a pain in the ass you could have could have mentioned that lula could have but thanks for that Douchebaggery. So again, this time, any dialogue option you can choose, always end up just choosing the top one, because it's a lot quicker. But again, don't get me wrong, the story in this game is really good, and there's a, there's a lot of super interesting stuff in here. But this is just purely for the achievement guide, this. Slamming through it like a fat kid through cake. Job done. Lula, honey, we, we don't work here. Why can't he just take us up and grab what we need? But apparently that is the laziness in offices these days. No offense if you work in an office, but you're probably lazy. And that's not to say that I'm not lazy. I love being lazy, so don't, don't take that as a bad thing. So we're going up, but again, we're going to ignore Shannon again. What we're going to do is go to the second floor this time, which is the conference room. Um, so... Yeah, so we do actually need to go to the fourth floor, so I'm actually kind of glad Lula hasn't come with us. So we need to go to the conference room again. Nobody's saying anything like, what What are you doing? This is a meeting, bro. What, what are you doing? Go piss off, limp bag. Go you and your, you and your limp, succulent Chinese meal can bag her off. But we're going to go all the way to the right anyway, and we're on to the balcony. And then what we can do is there's going to be an option eventually when we can get to the right. It's going to pan over. We're going to choose the organ option. And all we need to do is wait for this guy to start playing the organ. And then we will get the achievement called Organ Performance. Why is there a homeless guy playing a random organ right outside the bureau? Who knows? But that's the kind of gay, <laughs> kind of the way the game is. Kind of gay the way it is? Yeah, sure.
Lovely job, mate. Right, uh, by the way, the re we're gonna go back to the elevator. But the reason you don't hear any music is, again, just just in case the whole copyright thing. I just can't be asked to be buggering around with that, because they went, Oh, you played an organ. This is in my game, so you give me all of your five pounds. <laughs> no. So what we're gonna do now is actually go up to the fourth floor. So again, as long as you've got the achievement called Organ Performance, the organ is still playing in the background, which is why it is Silencio right now. But we go into the fourth floor, which is the Archives and Records, and... Again, like I said, it's very simplistic game style, very much like the um, Artful Escape, in a way. Except the Artful Escape was a lot more beautiful and a lot quicker. Uh, but we're going to interact with the documents on the table. Again, if you want, you could do a much more thorough examination, but there's not a lot of useful information. So, again, just keep slamming through all of the dialogue. In fact, we're going to put the logbook away. So don't slam through it all. We're going to put the logbook away. Um, and then what we can do is just go all the way back to the first floor and report back to Lulu. And again, that's another choice where you're going to smash through all the dialogue with no consequences. And back down the stairs we go, back down the elevator like a hoo. So, she's directed us, basically Lula, Lula's directed us to the lobby and Mary Ann. So, we need to go back to said reception with Mary Ann. Now, for the next part, we are going to be uh, in the zero. So, we're just going to speak to uh, Mary. Mary Ann! Mm-hmm, there she blows, right. And now we can get back in our truck. So, there are two options in getting around the zero. We can basically, it's it's literally a zero, so you just keep going clockwise or counterclockwise until you find what you're looking for. So you can either drive clockwise, which is to the right, until you find the crystal. We can, with the, we can then stop and take the 8192 off-ramp and then drive counterclockwise until we reach self-storage. Or... We can select the nap option. In the bottom left corner, you should have ZZZ option. So choose that. Obviously, the Welsh Hunter sign's in the way. But I, I'm, now I'm not too sure. So this is basically the zero. I'm just showing you exactly wh what it is, what it looks like. Now, I just basically spammed a whole bunch of buttons. And the ZZZ option appeared in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, so I'm not actually too sure how to get one up. But it didn't come up straight away. I don't know if you have to spam... A, a, if it's one specific button or we just have to wait until the ZZZ option appears But when it does choose that and then choose yeah, maybe that's a good idea And then what will happen is Shannon will basically drive us to the self-storage luckily we can do that throughout the entire game, which is nice um, I wish we could do that in real life, but you know, we're not that rich are we really? Um, now for whatever reason Shannon decided to not Drive me all the way to self-storage, which is why I'm trying to <laughs> Which is why I'm trying to play Finder here. Uh, but again, if this happens for whatever particular reason, just use the ZZZ option again. And say, Shannon, mate, you're taking a piss now. Just get me to sell storage. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I want to go to bed. Yeah, Jesus Christ, what the hell. So I thought, that's why I went round there. That's why I went clock uh, clockwise just once, because I thought... She hadn't got us there, but there it is then, so doing it twice eventually gets us self-storage. 
So, nip in there. How can you find anything in the Zero Hill? It's very spooky. But anyway, uh, we basically, all we have to do then is just speak with Brandon, who is the janitor on the right-hand side. Uh, you'll be able to see exactly what it looked like now. There's only one other person here. And there he is. So speak with the janitor. Again, smash through all the dialogue. Keep picking the top option. Makes no difference. Then we'll speak to Shannon. And then we can get back on the road again. So here we are then. So we can either retrace our steps, go back to the bureau, or we can just take another cheeky little nap because we are an old man. Press the ZZZ option. Maybe that's a good idea. Shannon's going to get us there nicely without any of that old man, you know, crashing into people stuff. So interact with the bureau again. Now again, what you can do if you wanted to, this would be a very good time to explore the zero if you want to. Um, but of course, remember to use the brochure in the notes for any directions to any hidden uh, places in the zero that you might want to find. Um, again, if not, then it's up to you. You can just crack, crack on with the video, and we'll just smash on through the achievement guide. But the, the optional exploration is always there anyway. So when we have returned to the bureau, we're going to speak to Carrington here, who's on the front desk. So move your left stick down, and we're going to speak to Carrington, the brave Sir Knight of the Fourth. Um... And all he's going to ask for is a suggestion for his play. You can literally just pick any one dialogue option here. Does nay matter? So, after speaking to Mary Flange again, um, she tells us that Lula has nipped off. Cheers, kid. Thanks for giving me the run around, you douchebag. We're going to go back down now. So, we need to find a doctor. So, what we're going to do is head onto the main road, Interstate 65. Swoo. And what we're going to do is go south until we see the observatory. So, we're going past the horse, past the oily bit. Let, 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 keep going, and then right here to the left is where we're going to find this path, and then from this bit, we're going to go straight, and then right, and here where it says Dr. Truman's house. Oh, hello, Truman, this is the Truman Show, but we are going to interact with that, and then interact with it again when it turns into the, the museum. So, job done. See, flying through it like a chunky boy loves a KFC, eh? Huh? Which is probably me. Which I'm happy with. Welcome to the Museum of Tomorrow! 
In fact, it's not. So what we're going to do is start walking down. You have to go around the benches. For whatever reason, you can't just go straight through the big, massive, obvious gap. You have to go around it, which is always the norm once again. So what we're doing, we're just walking all the way around. And basically, there's going to be a big, chunky elevator boy at the back that we need to go in. So it's orange. It's a big elevator. You can't really miss it. But again, if you want to interact with some of the other pieces of art and crap in here and have a look at some more backstory, beat my chicken breast. So, there's one reason we're on here, uh, this rooftop, in the pissing down rain, and one reason only. I want to conduct enough electricity so that I, 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 oh, there's an eagle in the background. Anyway, no, what we're doing is just walking all the way around, and we're just going to, uh, walk around until we find Ezra. George Ezra. So, just keep going. Again, there's a, a, a bunch of people you can speak with on here if you want, i.e. this guy, but we're not going to speak to this guy. I did start, and then what I found was it did, didn't add anything to the story. So, keep going to the left. Ezra, you're going to see, is basically right in view. I've been riding shotgun underneath the hurts and feeling like shit when me, me, me. Right, so what we're going to do now, after we smash through all this dialogue, basically we're going to be on the map and immediately there's no way that you can stop the bird. We're going to go to the map and we have to find this, we have to go uh, basically along this sort of specific route to find the forest. Um, but again, when we get to the map, this is where we see Ezra and his giant fat eagle boy. I mean, fear dudes, right? It get, gets you to places a lot quicker. But as we begin, you don't start like you do with the truck or anything like that. You just start as the bird immediately. So, what we're going to do is head up and go along this dotted line right here. So, it can't, it's quite quick. <laughs> it's quite fast as well. So, we need to be going along this dotted right uh, line called the Green River. So just keep going up, ignoring everything in your path for now. But yeah, it does take a little bit of white, uh, a little bit to get used to the sort of uh, directionals and things like that. And how quick actually the curse is moving is what I meant to say. But we go past El Corn Mine. When we see the fork in the road, we're going to go to the right, and then we're going to go to the right. So continue going to the right along the green, green river of home. If you were a water snake. So what we're going to do, head up, and up, and up. Now it looks like it's the end, but it's actually not, because this is the point where we actually need to be on um, this, uh, what is this, the, the Lake Cumberland. So from here we're going to go sort of up again, sort of to the left and up, and then what we're going to see then is a forest, and that is the exact point of what we need. So there it is then, so you just see it coming into view. There it is, big bunch, what's supposed to look like trees. Get your bum the snatches in them, boys. We are in the forest. Right, we're almost done with Act 2, actually. So all we have to do is run all the way to the right to progress. Speak with um, Limpy Boy and Shannon. Keep going to the right, speak with Limpy Boy and Shannon. Limp Succulent Chinese Meal Boy and Shannon. Just keep doing that until we get into Dr. Truman Show's office. Thank you. 
Once again, any bit of dialogue option does not matter. I'm always going to be picking the top one. I mean, to be fair, this doctor is a long way out. A long way out, just because uh, you had a stone attached to your leg for a little bit. Yeah, you bloody foof. Anyway, speak to Dr. Truman, and we're going to unlock the second achievement called Act 2, and then we're going to go into the interlude, the short act after the big act. Wow, spooky stuff. Mwah. Okay, it's not that spooky, but here we go. It's the end of Act 2. Now we are going to play the interlude called The Entertainment. Now, this goes on for oh, a considerable lot longer. So, if I were you, I'd have Netflix open, or I'd have something to watch on your phone for at least the ten next 10 minutes or so. I think it was about 12 to 13 minutes, this one, and this was me bashing the dialogue. If you want to have a look at all of the dialogue and keep reading, it's going to take roughly about 30 to 45 minutes. But if we keep spamming the dialogue like we're going to be doing, um, it'll take us about 12 to 15 minutes or so. So, we play as basically the barfly, the one with the chunky big ears in the back, behind the bar, obviously. Um, we're in a non-speaking role, and all we got to do is just literally spam. Spam, spam, spam. This is basically a stage play. If you wanted to know, if you were that interested, made by Carrington, the ever present fourth, Joseph and Lula. Um, so again, all that we need to do is just keep spamming the dialogue. When if these two guys stop here, uh, stop talking, it means there's another couple of people on the on the table on the right. So if you move the right stick to the right hand side table, you see their conversation. When they stop, you go back to this couple. Keep spamming through the dialogue, etc. So that's all it is for this. You can, what you can do as well, you can actually turn around, look at the audience and everything as well, if you so choose. Uh, but if you just want to spam through it, keep spamming through this dialogue. Two more people are going to come back on the right, sit on a table. So again, just keep um, moving the screen back and forth. But again, I'd have something there to watch just in case, because it does get quite boringly tiring quite quickly. Um... But, what, sorry, one more little bit interesting thing is, the events that are shown in this particular stage play, it's an adaptation of an incident that actually occurred in the Lower Depths, um, or it is an incident that occurs in the Lower Depths Tavern before Act 3. Um, also, more interesting stuff, <clears throat> Rain's Law, which is what they're talking about now, Rain's Law, it was an actual New York regulation in the very early 1900s, which basically, they, they basically banned, prohibited, whatever you want to call it. They banned the sale of alcohol on Sunday except for hotels. And even then, 
Only a drink, you could only order a drink that was served with food. Um, but, but funnily enough, you know how they always do, as we see a new person come in. So again, keep spamming the B button through all the dialogue, that's fine. But um, bars and saloons, as they all so often do, they found loopholes to satisfy the law, uh, or at least their minimum requirements. So, and they were able to continue serving the copious and the mega amount of alcohol like usual. And basically, the, the most well-known one of these, which if you have a look at the table, you will see um, a brick sandwich and a couple of drinks. That is what it was. The most well-known of these was serving um, any particular alcoholic drinks with a brick sandwich. And for some reason, the law went, yeah, fucking right, yeah, that sounds good to me. You you look like you eat a bunch of bricks. You're all good, mate. Happy days. <laughs> so <laughs> that's basically just a little uh, extra thing for you there because I'm nice. Um, but yeah, very, very mad. How can we get over this law about selling alcohol? Screw it. Check a brick in a sandwich and then job done. Could have literally just used ham, cheese, anything like that, but whatever. So again, like I said, just smash through all of the dialogue, spam it through the B button, and then that will actually complete this uh, second interlude.
Right, when it's all stopped talking, we bang it around. There's going to be a skeleton as a director, or... Or is that supposed to be Carrington? Who knows? But what we know is that that's the end of that. And the screen's eventually going to go black. And it is going to unlock us the entertainment achievement. Dashy blows, dashy blows. Right, so... The first two acts we got done quite quickly there. Um, if you include the interludes there, it's around an hour and five minutes. Um, now, Act 3. There are five achievements now in Act 3, and we can get this done in around an hour and a half to two hours. I think it's more sort of an hour and a half. So, let's play Act 3. What's going to happen is Conway's going to have a cheeky flashback about... How <laughs> how Vi he didn't have to use to take Viagra and pills to get himself up in the morning um, with his ex lever. Well, Jesus Christ, how did he fix his leg? Oh, my leg's hurting. Right, if I just take off all the skin and all the muscle and just leave it completely exposed as a skeleton, then you should be fine. <laughs> Bang, tidy, job done. So when we begin here, as Conway, we're going to run down to the north. And then eventually, I, I suppose we're just testing out our new skeleton leg. Because apparently that's how it goes, look. And then eventually we're going to start playing as little Georgie Ezra. And we're going to keep going until we see this little girl called Flora. Now, of course, Big George has a big throb on for our little Flora. He is well into Flora. Um, and we need to uh, do likewise. So, choose, I think we're friends. And then what we need to do is actually choose a specific dialogue. And now you have to say, did you make the boat? Then choose, okay. Eventually, so there we go, okay. Right, now what we have to do, you've got to wait. Don't run off uh, back to the truck just yet. We need to wait for the paper boat to float off screen. And then when the paper boat floats off screen enough, a new prompt to speak with Flora will appear. So we need to speak to Flora again. This will, uh, as long as you watch the boat um, float away, that's going to appear later on for another achievement um, in the same act. So we just need to wait until a new prompt to speak with Flora appears.
I mean, actually, I suppose the advantage is if we find another person attractive and we're just waiting and watching something, we can uh, said admire that said attractive person without coming across creepy. Uh, so, obviously, just don't take my advice. I have really bad advice. So, to say just barely, I'll squint, which is the, um, if I squint, the second option there. And then for this one, we can just choose anyone. I just choose the top option again. And then what that'll do is give us the Say Something Romantic achievement. So... Bruh, yo, bruh, we marrying you, and we also marrying our words as well to you. So, you want to go on a date? McDonald's and cinema, the ultimate British date when you're a young teenager? Still is for me, actually. That's where I take everyone that I ever love. McDonald's and a cinema date. So, we're running back up anyway. Um, But we're just going back into the trucks. That's all we're doing for this bit, then. We're basically uh, getting George Ezra to, you know, help him go on a cinema and McDonald's date. It's the, it's the ultimate, and I'll hear no other words about it. Smash through all the dialogue options anyway, doesn't matter which one that you pick. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. There we go. Uh, and then we can just uh, choose the truck option again. There we go, we get, we're getting there eventually. Right, now we're ready to leave. Um... I mean, what was your perfect first date? Or what was your worst first date? I'm actually very interested in people. Right, we're going anyway. You don't have to go the same way I do. You can just literally go anyway. Uh, anywhere, anyway. We're not exactly going to make it far. The reason being, we, bro, are breaking down. And then it's another long, long option. Another long, long set of dialogue options. Not only between us, but between two new characters. Junebug and Janone. hi Um... But yeah, just going back to the date things, I'd, I'd be very interested to know people's worst and best dates. Because uh, to me, McDonald's and cinemas, perfect. But, you know, I'm a simple man with simple pleasures. Like, sitting alone with a bottle of lotion. Alright, so anyway, um, <laughs> moving on. Swiftly moving on, again. Smash through all the dialogue here. What we're going to do, we're going to um, basically speak to Shannon. And then we're going to speak to her again. Have Shannon call for help. And then we're going to speak to her again. And then we can go to the left, speak to Ezra and Homer, or Blue, whoever you decided to call it, until, basically, we're just passing the time at this particular point. Basic. So keep smashing through all the dialogue until Junebug and Johnny make their entrants. My name's Junebug and John here. Right, so basically, same thing applies here. Um, you can choose literally any dialogue options you want. Any particular person, um, any particular thing. It's gonna sweep around, and we're gonna see the faceless, the faceless expressions of Junebug and Johnny. Um, so pick whatever you want. Smash the dialogue. Pick whatever you want until they get to where Shannon and Conway and Ezra is.
So after the long, long, long roads of winter and the long conversations, we are now on our way. So what we're going to do, again, you can do some optional exploring if you so wish. But if you just want to get there, we're, we're, that's where we're going. So we're going to head all the way up. We're going to go past Marquez's farmhouse, past the number 65 on the right. Now we're going to turn right here. And then keep going, keep going, and the tavern is just there. So it's not too far from Marquez's farmhouse. Um, so this is the third scene in the third act. Fantastic. What we're going to do then is enter Les Tavernes. And again, if you've been exploring and you're picking up different things and you're actually really, really invested in the story, it all comes back to, we got, we, we picked something earlier, which comes back to the lower depths, the tavern we're going in now, and then this is going to get something else for later on. It's all very interesting and very worked out brilliantly. So again, I, I suppose just like The Artful Escape, this is more of an experience than it is a game. But um, anyway, what we're going to do, go to the left there with our newly found skeleton leg, starting to look like Cubone. Um, we're going to speak with El Bartenderino, again, smash through all the dialogue, exactly what you want. And then afterwards, we're going to speak to Junebug, and it's a performance of a lifetime. We need to enjoy the music, um, and that's about it. We have to do pick a, a couple of dialogue options during the music, so just keep your eyes peeled. Otherwise, if you're not that interested, chuck something on the old flicks, chuck something on the old YouTube. Just watch something else, anything else for now. Because Junebug's going to start, he's gonna, she's going to get us going. Mm, yep, then. But basically... This whole point, if you were being invested in the story, there was somebody in the game who originally performed this song, which is called Too Late to Love You, which sounds like a Justin Bieber shit track. Um, <clears throat> but basically, uh, if, if you want to know, there is another clue near the end of Act 3. But less spoiler for you, is it? I'm in a spoily kind of mood. Basically, Lysette, who we've seen in a... Um, conversation in a flashback with Conway earlier she sang this song in a tavern many years ago and it is actually about her and Conway so that's if you're interested if not then tell me to share the fur jab get the fur jab also no sound just in case of stupid copyrightness of course
be surprised if she starts doing the Mexican wave dance now or something. She's, uh, she's certainly flinging them arms about, isn't she? So, after that uh, performance is done, <laughs> what we can do is we're going to thank Juneberg, uh, June, <laughs> Juneberg, Juneberg, we're going to speak to Harry, get an IOU from him, since he can't pay us, which, I mean, to be fair, he was trying to say he couldn't pay us, instead, Juneberg sort of went, nah, screw this, we are just going to, um, well, we're just going to sing anyway, but... We don't, so we don't have any money. So, well on Junebug, you've just done the Mexican wave dance for nothing. Right, so, <clears throat> we've got a new goal after this. We need basically need to find another entrance to the Zero. Now, this will be the last time that you can do any optional explorer on Kentucky Fried Chicken's roads. So, if you want to do any exploring and have a look at other places, etc., do that now, because as soon as you get to the Zero, we ain't coming back to this point. Which you may think is a little bit early, but it's actually not too bad. So, again, finish up any personal exploration before we move on. If we're all ready to move on, we need to find a frequency on the radio that Big Hazard um, uh, mentioned. <clears throat> so click on the radio, which should now be on the bottom left corner. Now, you can either tune it to 1288AM or 103.9FM. So I just go FM 103.9, make sure to turn the radio on, of course, because that is how you usually do it. And, well, that's the way we go. And it should uh, happen automatically. Again, we're going to smash the dialogue. It'll happen automatically. Go through the dialogue. I literally just said that twice. You didn't need to hear me say it a third time. Um, <laughs> and now we can nip on through. Uh, just keep driving, though. So just keep driving until the next cutscene triggers. And it's going to be a whole bunch of horses. Job done. Right, we're going to find ourselves... <coughs> Excusez-moi. Uh, Mademoiselle. So we're going to find ourselves back on the zero anyway. Now, for whatever reason, again, you can drive or you can use the nap option. Because we basically need to find the hall of the Mountain King. For whatever reason, um, again, it took... I'm not sure if you have to wait... A cut, you know, like a couple of minutes or something, because right now you should see the radio option is there, but no ZZZ option for taking a nap. So I was trying to spam through all the buttons again, but nothing seemed to be working this time, which is okay, because we're going to go to the left, or up, no, we're going to go to the, wherever we're going, counterclockwise, um, because the Hall of the Mountain Kings is basically right here. So for that bit, it doesn't matter. Uh, but for whatever reason, me spamming the buttons here wasn't getting the... Um, <clears throat> So, excuse me again, Jesus Christ. I give you COVID. No, I don't. 
In fact, no, Putin got rid of COVID now because you don't hear about it, do So give that one to Putin. The rest of him is complete dickbag, I mind. Um, so go to the Hall of the Mountain King. Um, it's the only open location for us anyway. And then what we can do is, just like the house in the first act, we just need to go all the way up and walk up to the boardwalk. So just keep on walking, walking, walking. But you actually have to walk up, to the right and up. It, some of these pits do and can look very confusing, but um, <laughs> as you can see here, I'm slightly confused. But eventually, there we go. So we find our way. So the path is just behind the truck. So move on up. And then basically, just keep going and going until you see a big, massive fire. Fire! Right, once again then, this bit isn't too confusing, we just need to walk around the fire and we're going to keep walking to the left until we see an old man named Donald. There's the old man, his name is Old MacDonald and he had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And after speaking with him, we found out that on his farm he had a program called Xanadu, E-I-E-I-O. With Xana here and Adu there, here is Xan, there is Xan, everywhere at Adu. Uh, no, but after we do speak to him... <laughs> Uh, we actually need to find up and power his uh, little software program called Xanadu. So again, it's all dialogue. Doesn't matter what you choose, just slap through it like a bass guitar titty bag. I don't know what a titty bag is, by the way. So if you ever think you'll ever get lost, you have no worries about that, because it'll always say where to go. So as you can see, Xanadu is all the way to the left. So just keep walking nice and slowly with your Q-bone leg, and you will see exactly what it is, because you will be able to interact with Xanadu. Wasn't Xanadu an ABBA song? Oh Xanadu, you don't work like you used to. Uh, and I'm saying that because it is actually unusable right now. Um, so, after we do this bit, what we need to do then is just basically return to Old MacDonald. Um, and we just need to do more dialogue, smash through the dialogue, talking to him, and he's going to talk to us about some strangers. So, again, in case you haven't noticed, all, all cutscenes are sadly unskippable as well. Which, honestly, is a bit, of a, <laughs> bit more, a bit more of a drag, to be honest, but... There we go. Such is life of the wife of the knife of the life.
So even though the program was unusable, it still took us through the whole freaking thing anyway. So instead of just going, oh, oh, it's broken, we'll save you sort of a minute or two, you actually got to what, sit through the whole thing, uh, you know, and go, all right, it's unusable, let's go. Oh, wait, we can't, got to watch the whole thing. So, like I said, go back to the left now, find old MacDonald, and he's going to talk to us about some strangers. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Welcome to the graveyard! We've got fun and games! Where all the dead people roam! And they try and get in your A. So, we are going to find ourselves, like I said, in the graveyard, just in case you didn't hear the upgraded version of the uh, Guns N' Roses classic. Um, now, what you can do, there's going to be a whole bunch of um, eyeball uh, notifications that we can pick if we want. Um... So you can interact with the tombstones, have a look at the story. But if you want to just progress the story, just go ahead and speak to Big Junebug. And um, Big Shannon, Big Conway is going to come back. And we're just going to end up uh, speaking to Donald again. So again, it's a smash through dialogue like a fat kid through cake kind of day again. Right then, so now that we've spoken to EIEIO, Mr. Old MacDonald, this Xanadu is basically, it's a game within a game, within a pizza, within a KFC, within a McDonald's, that's outside your head! Uh, it's, it's kind of, yeah, kind of that. 
apart from all the McDonald's, Pizza and KFC stuff right there. So it's a game within a game, so all we have to do, it's kind of like text-based adventure game, so it's going to ask you, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Again, though, um, you can't skip any cutscenes or anything, you've just got to wait for it to load. Um, but all we're going to do for now is, we're just going to pick all of the dialogue options, smash all the dialogue options that you can, until, until we reach somewhere called the edge of a hole. And basically, when we get to the edge of the hole, we need to select a specific dialogue option to get the You Died achievement. So, hey, if you go any near moist, damp holes, which haven't seen, um, <laughs> haven't been into for a long time, stay well away from there. So, welcome to the edge of the hole. Um, this is everyone's favorite hole. Big and chunky and you can just walk straight through it. Kind of like, and this is scientifically correct, you can actually walk through it like a whale's vagina. And I'm not kidding. The big baleen whales can be over 100 feet in length. Um, so, they are reproductive tracks. They can basically go for several feet, which means it's a vagina we can actually walk through. Anyway... Make sure to choose Lean In A Bit and check it out for this dialogue option. This is the one that gets us the You Died achievement. So when the achievement unlocks then, what you have to actually choose is the suggestion to use a rope and climb down safely. So we need to uh, climb down more carefully, uh, try using the rope to climb down safely, that's the one. And then for the next set of caves, the bed quilt caves, again we're just going to smash through the dialogue, uh, first dialogue option all the time. And yeah, we're just going to keep smashing it through and eventually we're going to reach like a management simulator which basically details Donald's work on Xanadu. So for now, just keep smashing it out. And did you think you'd ever hear a scientific fact on my channel or any of my videos? <laughs> no, you didn't. You learn something new every day. Now you can walk through a whale's vagina. You're welcome. <laughs>
yeah, did I mention that bit took quite a few minutes of um, incredible dialogue pushing? It does take a few minutes. Right, so this is the management simulation room. Um, no achievement here, but to get out of this place finally, and we can finally move on, um, we have to keep just going through this bit for a second until we get a dialogue option that says try to quit and start over. So smash through all of the dialogue here and eventually we should see a fourth one. A fourth one? Um, well, it's going to come up in a bit, but basically as soon as you see a fourth one, you can just do any one here, it doesn't matter here, but all we're trying to do is just go to the point where it says try to quit and start over. So this be the one, actually, now we can finally get out of this thing and continue with the frigging game, so try to quit and start over. Finally. Uh, come on, kid, we got stuff to do. Stop playing your games, you nerd. Even though games are just cool. They're not nerdy, games are cool. Right, uh, this, uh, pick anyone you want there, I just chose the top option, and then choose, maybe we have to wait it out. So there's two uh, the options there, and now we can choose. Maybe we have to wait it out. Either way, what that's going to do is bring Lula back. Remember Lula from the second act? Well, she's back. Hooray! We, we, we did it, I think. I don't know what we did, but we did it. So congratulations. Like the Barack Obama meme, give yourselves a nice pat on the back. So when we are back then, we are going to speak to either Donald or Lula, uh, makes no particular difference whatsoever. And then when all this is finished, we are basically done with this area, so we can now return to the bridge. More music's going to play, and like I said earlier, there's going to be no music on my screen, because I'm scared that I'll get copyrighted, end up going to prison, and being too scared to drop the soap. So, when we are back to the truck, let's drive there. Now, of course, we've got the two options. We need to go to the bureau, which you can either drive counterclockwise, so to the left when we start, until we reach Cathode Ray, wait, and then we take Route 65, and then drive clockwise until we find the bureau. So, that's the first option you can do. Or, like I said, you can either wait until the ZZZ options, they finally appeared for me, um, and again, that was just me spamming buttons, so sorry, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, I'm really not sure um, which one, uh, which specific button gets the ZZZ option up. But when we do that, <clears throat> select her twice, 
Junebug's going to take the wheel. And now we are basically at the Bureau. Um, so it doesn't say straight away. So if you move off a little bit and then come back, there we go. So we're at the Bureau. But what we're going to do before entering the Bureau, we are going to go to the right. So we're going clockwise until we find the TV. So it's literally called the TV with a picture of a TV. So just keep going clockwise. And eventually, Okay, that's the small wiener. Okay, that's the pube sandwich. Oh, it did look like a sandwich. It was a sandwich. <laughs> pube too. And eventually, this now should be the TV. But it's not, so keep going. Um, <laughs> sorry, wrong one. So you'll have to do it. It is there. Trust me, it is there. Don't panic. Um, but basically, if you go the other way, so to the left and go counterclockwise, then you obviously won't be able to see the TV. So this is the specific way you have to go. Here it is. Here it is. We finally found it. So we need to stop for a moment. Then we need to drive clockwise. So go back a little bit. Oh, and uh, the other clockwise way. And there's going to be a van here. So choose 70, then choose the van. And then this is for another missable achievement, by the way. So as the dog, all we're going to keep doing is walking left until the Phil and Jane achievement unlocks. And please, if you could forgive my absolute moronic ways, I was telling you to go anti-clockwise when it was actually... I got my anti-clockwise and clockwise mixed up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so... Stupidity got the better of me there, so I'm very sorry. Clockwise is obviously the same direction. The hands of a clock move, and anti-clockwise is... So, clockwise basically goes left, anti-clockwise goes right. Why I got those two mixed up, I don't know. So, I do apologise if you've been trying to follow along and you've gone, don't be a dingleberry, don't be a dingleberry, you're going the wrong way. I, 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 I'm very, very sorry, okay? Very sorry. Um, but anyway, now that we've got that confusion and you've laughed at me enough, we can now move on as soon as Phil and Jane Achievement have um, unlocked. <laughs> so... Let's just go, and we can forget this whole thing ever happened. Right, the ZZZ options should appear, so we're going to get Juneberg. And Juneberg, and the deck, and the wheel, yeah. And we're just, this time we're actually going to head in the bureau. By the way, this is the last time that we can explore the zero. So if you wanted to have a look, a look, a look, a look around, that was the last time you could have visited it and explored it optionally. If not, well... Eh, you know, who cares, we're going to get the full achievement, so, life is good. Right, when we get inside, yeah, in fact, we're almost done with Act 3, we are quite close now to doing Act 3. Um, right, so what we're going to do, we're going to ring the bell, we're going to summon Lula, basically smash through all the dialogue, as we've been doing, top option all the time, she's going to inform us of an incoming ferry that's going to get us closer to Five Wood Dog Drive. So, I guess we'll, um, well, we'll just go to the right. We'll wait with the others. It's going to trigger a nice cheeky little flashback. Cheeky little Nando's flashback. And then we're going to end up basically in the graveyard again. So this time, we're actually going to go to a place. And we're going to enter the abandoned church, which will be on our right-hand side. Right bottom. Our bottom right. There it is. So, nip yourself in. This is basically going to be the final area before we have to do Act 4 twice, and then Act 5. By the way, Act 4 is the worst act in the game, for me personally, anyway. It just dragged on and on. It just dragged on more than a tapeworm. 
Anyway, sit on the bench, and then what's going to happen? Um, we're going to go underground, awesomely. Again, if you've been following the story, you'll probably know why this is going to happen or why it's happening. But since I didn't this time around, I'm just going to guess and say aliens done it. Yeah, screw it. Aliens. <laughs> Right, so there's a few things that we're going to do here. One of them is mainly to get another achievement, which for some reason didn't unlock on my screen. So you're not going to see it, but I'm obviously going to tell you. Um, so we're going to be in control now of the skeleton, as you would have already figured out. But uh, his name is Doolittle, which, man, that name sounds awfully familiar. Um, but basically, we, ha we have to now give Conway and Shannon the tour of the distillery. Um... Now, again, what we're going to do is just do it enough so they can pro progress the story. So we're going to go down, we're going to go in this little um, shuttle, this little car shuttle thing right here. Um, so just jump in there. But you can do a bigger tour. You can use, use Shannon's degosser with, uh, with the X button to reveal more skeletal workers and learn more about them. But keep in mind that the longer that the tour goes on, the darker the distillery becomes. So don't take too long. Uh, if you want to see. Right, so to control one of these then, you, you can see the little arrow. So it's a bit of a pain to sort of get used to it first, again, because the cursor is so fast. But all you got to do is point the arrow in a particular direction, and Skeleton Man will go there. So the first thing we're going to do is go past shipping. Do not end up at shipping. Go past here. And there's going to be the docks just to the right of us right now. There it is. So to get off, you actually have to click on the docks option that's going to get this um, ghostly horseshoe and we can jump off now what we need to do is just go to the right where the water pumps are and then what we're going to see is a nice familiar paper boat float by so it's going to be roughly about right yeah uh, yum 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 ah there it is so when you see this paper float uh paper boat float by the under the horizon achievement will and should unlock for you for whatever reason, it did unlock for me, but it didn't unlock on screen, so I'm not sure why. But remember, you had to watch the paper, paper boat float away in the uh, earlier on in the third act with George, Ezra, and Flora. So when you do that, this one floats by. The end of the Horizon achievement will unlock, and now we can move on. So just make sure to wait until it unlocks before we nip on. So, now that we got to this point, and the achievement has unlocked, even though you didn't see it, because... Why not? Now we can just move on. So get back into the old shittle, the old shuttle. And now what we need to do is go back to the left until we reach shipping. And obviously shipping, we've just seen, it's just past the bunch of trucks on the left. So yeah, this was a... a genuinely, I don't know why I struggled so much. I don't know if this setting's actually to slow the cursor down a bit. I hope so, because man, I struggled and I looked absolute stupidity driving. Which is, sounds about right in real life, actually, as well. So, interact with shipping so we can get off. We're going to leave the vehicle, and we are going to select the truck. Now, what you're going to do, the selected in the truck on the right. No, no, don't get back in. Ah, come on, Q-Bone. Get your bony ass out of there. Select the truck on the right, please. Right, so when we do that, what's going to happen is a whole bunch of eye icons are going to appear now. Uh, we need to click on them all anyway, that's standard. But there's basically going to be two sets of dialogue options. One is just going to be saying, like, let's fix it or do something else. And then the other dialogue option, which is going to be the bottom option, are more self-reflective options. So it is, if you, again, if you're following the story closely and you want to know more about the story, it's highly recommended to choose the bottom self-reflective options during this inspection of the truck. 
Um, and then you'll just learn a lot more about Conway and his life before he became, I don't know, kind of looks like a crappier Donald Trump, actually a better Donald Trump there. It, it, you know, whatever you choose is completely up to you. Um, but one's for story and one's just for getting on with it. So, you do you, Hans. it's getting dark and scary now so after all that again depending on you know it doesn't make any difference for achievements those dialogue options it's literally just story based um, but we're coming up to the last bit now so get your cute bony butt bag right in that shuttle seat and fair play this is a hell of an underground mind and then what we're doing we're just going back up to where we started so head to the left here yes no, keep going to the left. No, no. So for whatever particular reason, I decided to go up. And guess what? Oh, hello, dead end. <laughs> yes, so very stupid of me, me. You had to go to the left where I said go to the left to basically get back out. Man, reversing is such a tit. Come in. Okay, there we go. Man, I bet you could have fun with these shuttles, mine, couldn't you? I like workplaces that allow you to have fun with, uh, you know, if you work in a factory or something and you're allowed to scoot along on um, pump trucks, that's the best thing about any factory job. The rest of it sucks ass, but if you're allowed to um, ride along on pump trucks, well, that's a pretty fun part of anyone's factory life. <laughs> Factories. Done my time in a factory, thank you very much. Right, so now we are back here. What we're going to do, we're going to walk back upstairs to the adding machine, basically to the church benches where we were at the beginning so go up the stairs now for whatever reason i think it's automatic but they end up going straight for a second and then go back up the stairs on the right and the adding machine is where cubone was at the beginning of this chapter a beginning of this scene sorry but anyway conway's gonna find himself with another new job again hopefully if you've been following the story you'll understand why but for me it was just a bit random that just because he's got a cubone leg they give him a job i wish it was that easy um, and anyway, the ferry's going to arrive, and we're going to find ourselves completing Act 3.
Well, didn't they just look like the worst Backstreet Boys in the world? That is another crappier band that we have to endure. One Direction and all them bum bags. Anyway, that's the Act 3 achievement done. Now we're going to play the short interlude. It's another short one, luckily, called Here and There Along the Echo. Now, it can be short. Once again, we're just going to smash through it for story progression. But basically, um, what we have to do is interact with the red button at the bottom and then type in the same number. should be exactly the same for you. So, 270-301-5797. And then what's going to happen? We're going to be met with an interactive voice response system. Um, now, what we can do, we can actually learn about the Echo River and all of its tourist attractions. Uh, it's basically going to say, press... If you want to learn more, press 1. If you want to do this, press 2. If you want to shove this phone up your butt, press 3. Whatever. So you can actually follow along. If not, you can just listen to the first menu, where it goes through it all, and then immediately pick up the phone and hang it up. Um, whatever you do, it's going to end this interlude anyway. Um, another little, another cheeky little easter egg, if you want to. If you don't pick up the phone and wait long enough, you'll eventually receive a phone call. Um, but if you keep on doing that, you'll get a lot more weirder phone calls. So that's just something else, optional. A lot of optionals in this game, if you wanted to do that. But again, if not, listen to this first menu. The You'll pick up the phone, and we're just going to immediately hang up and get the achievement, and move on to number four, or act four. Everyone's favourite. By the way, 270-301-5797 is an actual real... It's real Kentucky phone number. If you call it, it's basically just going to bring up the same dial prompts and automated recordings that are in this game. So, I, th I thought that was a clever little thing there. But, hang up, and let's get going, butt bag. For a menu of our resources, press 1. If you have an extension to dial, press number So, Act 4. Act 4. And you're looking at it now going 2 hours and 10, 2 hours 11 in. And we still got another couple of hours left. What in the fudge balls are you talking about, man? Act 4. What can we say about... Oh, what's the nicest thing we can say about Act 4? Alright, when we finish it for the second time, that'll be the nicest thing. It just... This one... Honestly... This is where the game started to get a bit hit and miss for me, in terms of how long it just freaking drags on for, man. Honest, honest to God, um, we're gonna need you're gonna potentially need around two to three hours to unlock all the four achievements, including playing it again. Um, but this just dragged on and on and on and on and on. And not even in a good sense either. There's a lot more dialogue this time than in the previous three chapters. So, I mean, no, no, come on. Come on, boys and girls, you've got this. Come in. So as we go through this first dialogue here, again, the majority of the dialogue is, as we've been doing, smashing through it, interacting with the first one. So when we get on board the Mucky Mammoth, that's a very aptly named boat, um, there's going to be Kate and Will on either side, so we're going to speak to both of them as Shannon. Um, so once we start here, we're going to have Kate on the right, Will on the left. So do you do you, just speak to both of them again, smash the dialogues, does name matter.
And then out pops George Ezra. Now, fun fact, this is how George Ezra actually got his musicians to play with him. Uh, he was on a boat called the Mucky Mammoth. And when we go inside the boat, you're going to see exactly the exactly the same conversation that happened with George Ezra and his music, uh, musicians to make him the most famous man in the world. Uh, well, not the most famous, but slightly famous now. And we haven't heard anything for a while. So go to the right, speak to the musicians. Again, this is exactly the same conversation. Um, there, there's a guy called Johnny and two women called Junebug and Clara who play with George Ezra. You must know I'm being sarcastic by now. So anyway, uh, we, <laughs> we speak to the musicians. Um, again, choose any dialogue options for the, for the moment. And then when we're able to use the recording on the cat, so you press the A button to use it. You can stay for as long as you want, but you can actually just press the A button. And as soon as George Ezra whips it out, his recorder, just press the A button to cancel that one again. So you don't actually have to wait this long. I thought it was an automatic thing, but uh, no. Just press the A button there to get out of that. Now that's the Y button, you ding. And there we go. And then finally for this bit, Conway and Shannon are going to share a couple of words. And then we're going to automatically black out. And go to our first stop. Now, because we're on a boat, we've basically got eight stops that we're going to go to. And one of these has an achievement. So, we have to go down this first specific route, which of course I'll let you know and tell you exactly where, to get the achievements. And this is actually the act where we have to get the Tuesday achievement in. Um, that's a little bit later on. That's on our seventh stop. So, obviously, it's all automatic when we get here, but now we're going to have the choice um, of what we want to do. Now, for this specific one, we're always going to be picking the bottom option. So, for this one, we want to um, follow Junebug and Johnny going to the gas station, so when we get there. So, this will be what will happen a lot. Basically, the second run through of this, we're just going to stay on the tugboat. But for the first run, we're basically going to get off at every stop. So, there you go. Ezra stayed on the tugboat, or Ezra followed Johnny and Junebug. So, choose the second option. Ezra followed. And, again, it's very easy bit, this uh, particular bit. Um, all we're going to do, we're going to basically speak with the attendant... Then after that, we search the nearby counter for snacks. Then you've got to talk with the others. And then you just have to do the same thing as Johnny. Um, he has a look for snacks. And then you go back and speak to Junebug. So that's all we're doing. So we speak to the attendant. Again, all the um, big dialogue prompts come up anyway. So you don't. Ha there's no specific dialogue options or anything. As per usual, um, we are just going to speak to the attendant, search the nearby counter for snacks, talk to Johnny, and then Johnny just does the same thing, and that gets us through this first section. Delicious. Very, very not boring or tedious whatsoever.
Now this is a gas station, but I assume she doesn't, uh, the attendant doesn't get a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't, but who knows? My assumption is though that it's not very popular. Because if we see on the right, that looks like it's for cars. Unless it's for small boats, like the one going to the right there. Who knows, anyway. We're just doing the same thing as Johnny, okay? <laughs> Let's leave our speculative speculations amiss for now. Uh, thank God, that's the first stop over! Right, seven to go, and a long way to go in it as well. So the second stop on our journey of fantasticness is basically a beachside bar called the Rum Colony. So we're going to play as Shannon. Now once again we're going to have the dialogue option where we can choose to follow the others ashore or stay on the tug tugboat. Again, it's always going to be the second option, get off. So. We are going to get off, and the reason is there's a specific achievement that we can only get by getting off. So again, choose a second option. Uh, we are nipping into the rum colon. The rum colon. Ooh, that's a nice colon. So all we have to do to get this uh, missable achievement here is we're going to walk up to the bar, and we're going to wait until the barman Patch answers a phone call. Um, we actually play as Patch, where we do a little bit of dialogue options. Just keep slamming through, um, but you've got to keep slamming through the dialogue again as Pat. So here we go then. It looks like a goddamn nice little place, mind. This, I think, is people's idea of heaven. It's, it's got to be, isn't it? It's just got to be. It's just Mentos. So there's Patch. So we are going to just wait. Um, ar again, around 30 seconds to a minute or so until the phone starts blurring. And there it goes. So, uh, how, Joe? Right, just keep, um, again, I think if you just keep listening, it gets rid of it quicker. Or I think we can actually, no, we can just say, I think you have the wrong number. So, I'm keeping listening for some reason. <laughs> you can just pick, thanks, you have the wrong number. Th there we go. So, right, job done. So, that gets us the uh, patch speaking achievement. Again, very easily missable. Although, if you're having to replay this stupid act twice, then it's what we have to do. Right, what we can do now is talk to Kirano, Serrano, Carano. So, basically, where we just were um, as Patch, Carano, Serrano, whatever the hell your name is, is the uh, musician. I decided to go around the whole beach to find him straight in the bar, which was annoying. And what's going to happen is, uh, we're going to have, again, smash through all the dialogue as we've been doing through the entirety of the game so far. And but because he's a lazy douchebag, we need to collect tips on his behalf, which just... I mean, if you're American, it's just what you're used to, isn't it? You've got, you got to tip your whole life savings if you want to go for one meal. Because for some reason, Americans don't pay their waiters and waitresses very well. Or delivery drivers. What the fudge? Do better, America, in that sense. you got to. Got to. Um, but anyway, so we speak to Shannon there, gives him a tip, and now we can move on. Now, there is Conway, and there is Will here as well, on the right-hand side. We can turn our torch on with the A button. But there's Conway, so you can speak to Conway if you want. Um, and there's Will uh, a little bit further down, Willy Bum off the boat. But what we're going to do is just head back to the boat for now. 
And again, like I said, there's a lot more things you can have a look at. You can speak to other people, look for other things. But what we're going to do is just head back to the dock, speak to John Bear and down here on June Bear, yeah. But Conway, who basically wasn't an alcoholic before, is now. So this whole beach paradise has fudged him up. Which, to be honest, if I was going to be an alcoholic, this would be the place that I'd want to do it. Rather than in, you know, in the local where you can basically catch AIDS at the tip of hat. So, speak to Conway again, all the way on the right-hand side here. And we're going to have to nip on. So, as soon as that's done, this bit ends. And then we're going to go on to another detour, where the third one is basically a telephone on a raft. And again, just remember, you've got the choice of following the crew to the phone, or staying on board as the dogs. Again, this is going to be the second option, where we follow the crew to El Fono. Right, so again, we're going to choose the second option, of course. Now, what you can do, another little bit of an Easter egg here. Um, you can just choose freely when listening to the call, so none of the dialogue options matter. Basically, what you're going to do is have a couple of people phone up their respective partners, clients, whatever the hell they want. Smash through the dialogue as you see fit. But Will, the uh, hippie, I think, in the green shorts and the white jacket, his messages are actually real recordings from players who called the 270-301-5797 during Kentucky Route Zero's episodic release, which is just, it's, it's actually really cool. That is actually really cool. So basically, there are a selection of all these responses to two extensions, which they asked the caller, what is the caller's earliest memory, and what? why can't the caller sleep? So, very, very interesting, but that is Will. Again, you can have a look through all of that, which I begin to before realising I can actually just hang up and not bother. But again, if you want to, that's up to you with Will right here, but again, we're just going to smash through as much dialogue, try and hang up as quick as we can, um, and then we can just move on.
Yeah, isn't that nice? So everyone's had their phone call. Everybody all are good. Um, and who wants to do that? Who goes, oh, I'm trapped in the zero. Let me phone a client for work. Bah, screw off. Right, now we are obviously going to uh, pick the bottom option there. Shannon, Ezra, the old man, and his bum snatch get off. And then what's going to happen is, uh, we're now at the Radvansky Center, but this is quite a bit of a lengthy scene again. Um, uh, it basically follows two workers, and they were just reviewing sh footage of uh, g g Cognac. What's his name? Conway Cognac. Um, <laughs> and Shannon undergoing... Well, it's actually, sh it's actually showing Shannon undergoing her university research study. Uh, but Conway does appear in this. Um, basically, each room, though, it's it's basically going to follow a similar pattern. We have to interact with a few things, and then we have to take a seat to answer a questionnaire. Uh, now, don't worry, it's no pressure. You don't have to get specific um, ones correct or anything like that. We are literally just picking the um, uh, specific whatever we've got to pick in the room, sit down, and that's that. Um, but this bit does have a lot of um, backstory and lore, etc., etc. So, very, very interesting again, though. So, what you do is interact with the book here, or the bookcase on the left. You interact with the um, painting on the right, the seat in the middle, and then go down the screen to find the seat in order to fill out the questionnaire. And it'll be the same for all these uh, next bunch of scenes. So you're always going to get two or three things to interact with on screen. So just interact with them and just, you know, enjoy life. Yeah, sure. <laughs>
ho, 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 ho. Yeah. Right, so that's that bit finally done. Um, right. So I don't know how you guys are feeling right now. Are you feeling still pumped up to finish this game? Or are you starting to feel a bit exacerbated? A bit tired? A bit, uh... <sighs> A bit like this is dragging on incredibly much. Me too. Me too. So, for the next bit, um, for the fifth out of eight stops, we are going to get off on an island. And again, um, as Ezra, you can either choose to go with Kate and forage for mushrooms, which would be the second option again. Or we can stay aboard the old tag, tag boat for a nap. Of course, we need to get off this time, so that is exactly what we're going to do. And this is a mega easy bit. All you're doing is switching back and forth between dialogue boxes. Um, there's nothing to do. You just switch back and forth, smash through all the dialogue as quick as you can, and that is that for this section. Uh, time for a coffee. Right, the sixth uh, bit on our trip is, um, where are we going? The Echo River Central Exchange. Now, now, if you thought you were getting bored, now, what we're going to do, this bit doesn't actually matter. We can either leave on a dinghy with Conway, or we can stay aboard the tugboat to cook. Now, just to keep it up, I actually choose to leave with Conway, um, 
But unlike decisions from earlier on, this one is actually non-choice. It always ends up being the same. So if we actually chose to stay on the tugboat, we'll be greeted with this short scene uh, that ends with Shannon basically leaving on a dinghy anyway with Conway. So it doesn't matter. Um, no, just... Uh, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> what can I say about this bit? Apart from it is the longest, draggiest... I've had... I haven't had poops that have dragged out longer than this. I like poop a while. Um, not that you needed to know, of course, but there we go. Something you learn about me again. See, we're all friends. So we don't actually control the boat. Conway controls the boat. For whatever piss in particular reason, Conway doesn't decide to go, you know what, let's just speed it up a bit so we can get there quick. No, Conway takes his freaking old ass time on this bit. All we've got control is is uh, control of is the lamp, and then all that's going to appear is a couple of monuments. We have to click on the monuments to uh, basically find out crap about bats. They hang upside down, they bite you, they suck your blood, and they poop on you. That's that's basically what a bat does, right? They're pretty close enough anyway. But this is it. So we, this is literally like seven to ten minutes of floating, very, very. Very. <coughs> Excuse me. Slowly. Um, so yeah, we'll just interact with um, any of the prompts that come up with the monuments. Uh, we're going to learn about white noise syndrome. Also, what I know about white noise syndrome is adults hate it. Babies seem to love it for some reason. Knocks them straight out, which is just awesome. And a bunch of other trivia. So yeah, just. Enjoy the next 10 minutes. Chuck something up on your phone or something, because... Boy, this is where it starts to get sleepy time.
So there are a bunch, a whole bunch of bats. Is there a Batman? Or a Catwoman? Or a Batwoman? Or Man Bat? No, they're just regular crappy ass bats. Um, you can just ignore them. Or if you really want to, you can actually turn off your lamp for ages. That disperses them. Um, but doing that, doing the latter there, turning off your lamp just to disperse them, uh, is actually recommended if you do want to learn more story about Conway. But again, if you don't give too much of a monkey's fudge bag right now, just leave your lamp on and just keep watching whatever's on your phone until we get to the end. We get in there. So, so slow. It's so painful.
Well, goddamn, I don't know if you'd be happy to get to an end of something, but we are at the end of something. Um, sadly, though, again, sorry to just ruin your time as we finished. As we have to play Act 2 again, we have to float through this river again. But Conway does speed up just a touch in the second one, so you get there quite a bit quicker. Anyway, we have now finally reached Central, Ex uh, Central Exchange. Probably could have just walked there or swam there instead. It would have been a lot quicker than Cubone Leg. And Cubone Arm now. Sorry, I forgot he had a Cubone Arm. Hilarious. So you can speak to Conway one more time. Smash through whatever the dialogue is right here. Um, Flora is on the right-hand side. You can speak to her if you wish. Um, you don't have to. This You don't progress the story by speaking to Flora. It's just a little extra bit of dialogue that we've already seen enough of. Otherwise, we need to go to the left to speak to Big D, Dashiel. Again, smash through any bit of dialogue you so choose. And then we're going to head down past the plaque. We're going to sp uh, speak to Poppy as well. Big Poppy dog. Right. So again, we're going to smash through the dialogue. And there's going to be the only real-time choice in the game is coming up after we speak to Poppy. Now, what I'm wondering is, who decided to put an office down here? Surely you can't get good, good no internet signal there. Or I suppose if your office job pisses you off that much, you can just jump in the river... Float away into the underground of Cubone Marowakis City. So as soon as she stops talking, you need to make a choice. It's either, um, you can either choose the arrow or the skull. Now the arrow means the dog is going to leave with Shannon and appear in Act 5. Or if you choose the skull, the dog will stay with Conway and won't appear in Act 5. So for me, I chose the arrow so the doggy can come with us. You can get fudged if, um, oh in fact, you know, the dog will probably just eat all the bones eventually to death anyway. So, uh, but Conway... Again, for whatever particular reason, turns into a full skull and goes away. I'm not sure if that's the terms of retirement. So when old people retire, they just turn into skull and bones and have no life. Mate, old people have got it good when they retire. Apart from the ones that can't walk if they got hip problems and stuff, of course. But yeah, Christ, I can't wait to retire in about 40 years. Or no, in the UK government in about 100 years. And I have to work even when I'm dead at 150 Anyway, wh whatever the case, that stop is f f f finally done. Finally done. We do have another lengthy tugboat cutscene though, so smash through all the dialogue again. And wonder why Conway turned into a skull and never appeared again. Not sure why that is, but it is tis what it is. At least we got his dog now. <laughs>
So here we go. Welcome to Summon Idas and welcome to, if you are not playing on a Tuesday, welcome to the next on online offline method that we have to do in order to get the Happy Tuesday achievement. So uh, what we're going to do, Shannon, are we going to uh, uh, walk to the top? Eventually, we're going to get there eventually, and then Shannon's going to check in with Johnny and Ezra. Now, we got a bunch of people at the top we're going to speak to. There they are, taking a meal. Johnny and George Ezra are on the right-hand side playing a claw machine game. Everyone knows claw machine games. Everyone gets really pissed off by claw machine games, unless they're that skilled at them. Me, I suck complete monkey nuts at uh, claw games. Can't win anything for my kids. Uh, I'll pretty much I failed as a parent in that case then. Just a damn shame. Now, there's Johnny and Ezra. We're going to go there automatically. We're going to pause the game, though. So, again, if you are playing on a Tuesday, very important, if you are playing on a Tuesday right now, like now, as I say now, ignore this offline method bit and just skip forward by about a minute or so, or whatever. Otherwise, we're going to pause the game, and now we have to do the whole um, offline method. We have to do this in order to get the Happy Tuesday achievement, um, otherwise, you'll just have to come back on a Tuesday, replay the act again, and nobody wants to replay all of that act to get there. So, go to the main menu, quit, and then go all the way to the right, and then go into your settings. Go to my home Xbox there, so general personalization. I'd already gone offline at this point, but you need to be online. So, this bit is very important. A lot of people seem to get uh, confused as to why, for whatever reason, it wasn't working. We need to be online, we need to go to settings and personalization, go down to my home Xbox right there, and then, oh, come on man, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, I've got all day, yep, yeah, pop in your password or whatever you've got, of course, you ain't going to see men, and make sure that, make this my home Xbox is ticked, so you definitely need to make sure that this is your home Xbox, if you don't, then this trick won't work, um, Again, you can make this your home Xbox and then just go back to your other pal's Xbox later on. You get you get five for the year anyway, so you should be okay. So now we're going to go out. We're going to go to General and Network. Go back offline. There it is. So hopefully I'm pacing this well enough so that you can keep up. So you've got to make sure that it is your home Xbox. Go offline and then we're going to restart the console. Okay, so again, do it this way just in case. So... Press and hold the big X in the middle of the controller, of course. You know how to restart your Xbox control. And let us restart this business. So, doing the things that we just previously, uh, previously mentioned should now enable us to manually change the date. So, we should still be offline. It should be our home Xbox. So, what we're going to do is go back to settings. We're going to go down to system, down to time. And then on the right-hand side, you should now be able to change the time and the date. So for me, the Tuesday was the 15th of March right here. Of course, don't pick the exact particular date that I do. Pick whatever it is, is that the Tuesday it is coming up for you. Make sure that it is definitely the Tuesday. So just um, interact with your calendar, take a look at your calendar, whatever. Just make sure that it is on a Tuesday. Doesn't matter what Tuesday, just make sure it is on a freaking Tuesday, man. So for me, like I said, Tuesday 15th of March, ooh, look at that, it's March tomorrow as I record, uh, Tuesday tomorrow as we record it. Anyway, we, we can now go back, so again, double check that the date and the day has stayed there. As long as you've done that correctly, we can now go back into Kentucky Zero Route, and again, providing that you're offline and you've made your Xbox your home Xbox, you should not have an issue so you should be able to change the day and go back into this game with no issues so basically if you haven't made it your home xbox it basically tells you that you can't play it so just keep that one in mind so reload your save right there and then no i think sadly and extremely annoyingly we have to play the whole first bit again. So, I mean, not not the first bit of the whole act, of course. Um, <laughs> thank God, because that would have just taken the payas. Oh, no, no, we, we, no, we're good. We start right back here. So, these are the specific, very, very specific dialogue options that we need to pick. So, when Johnny asks for a quarter, you have to choose, sure, I have one quarter. 
Was that good, American? Sure, I have one quarter. Right, happy days. Now for this bit, you can just... Uh, Johnny's going to ask about Conway. We can choose anything until Shannon nips off. And then Johnny is going to ask Ezra about... Um, there we go. So off goes Shannon. So now we can start. So now choose the bottom option. I'll try to get the headphones. Very important, this bit. So I'll try to get the headphones. Now, choose... When we get there... Ezra pushes the joystick right. So, yeah, timer. Oh, wait, it's not a timer. Uh, so, Ezra pushes the joystick right. That's the first one. Next, choose Ezra pushes the joystick straight up. Ah! So, Ezra pushes the joystick up. There we go. Basically, got six times to go. Now, choose Ezra pushes the joystick right. <laughs> And then, finally, choose Ezra pushes the button to drop the claw. So, the um, bottom option of that particular one. The button to push the... to drop the claw. Now, because it is a Tuesday, the claw is going to hold onto the headphones with a nice tight grip. And it's going to deposit them into the price slot. So, if you're playing on a Tuesday and you haven't done your own offline method, you haven't had to, the Happy Tuesday achievement should unlock. Now, what you can do, you can finish the conversation between Johnny and Ezra... Um, but what I actually ended up doing was going back online um, during the conversation. Now, I thought I'd actually messed it up, uh, which is why I end up trying to go back through the method. I thought I'd done it too early, as you'll be able to see. So we're back online now. So go back in your settings, general, network, go back online. So now what we can do, we actually have to go back through the game again. So again, choose Kentucky Route Zero. But again, like I said, I would finish the conversation between Johnny and Ezra first. D d more of a just-in-case, but for me, luckily, it seemed to work anyway. I think as long as you do th that particular bit, and then you push the button to drop the claw, that is when the achievement should unlock. Um, otherwise, we go back on it. We're back at Sam and Ida's. And then we're going to come to the same bit. Now... What this is, again, this is another important bit. The achievement should retroactively unlock in the background after about maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Um, but what I would personally do is, is, is just press the pause button. Highly recommend just pressing the pause button, waiting until the achievement unlocks, and then moving on. Now, for some reason, I thought I'd done it wrong, so I actually went to go through all this again before it actually unlocked for me. So, as you can see then, I didn't have to wait 10 to 15 minutes or anything at all. So I thought I'd messed up. I was going to go back through it again. The achievement unlocked. Then I could go back onto Kentucky Route Zero. So again, it may take up to 10, 15 minutes. So what I would do, you can either continue playing or, like I said, you can either just idle in the game or just press the pause button and wait for it to unlock. But hopefully it should unlock just as quick for you as it did for me then. Um, yeah. By the way, in very, very rare cases... The process of doing offline and online method, the achievement can take up to 24 hours to unlock. So if it doesn't unlock straight away or after a couple of minutes or whatever, don't panic. You should get it using that method. Um, whether you want to wait till a Tuesday or whatever, that's completely up to you. Um, but doing it that way should get you the achievement. So hopefully that is all good. Now we can finally move on with the game, thankfully. Now, if you wanted to actually get past this bit a little bit quicker, you could have just said, no, I don't have a quarter. Sorry, up your mum. We're going over here. Um, but I'm actually just showing you the exact same bit we've done uh, to get the achievement, if you are playing on a Tuesday, of course. Uh, so um, I'll try to get the headphones. Ezra pushes the joystick right up, then right, and then pushes the button to drop the claw. Otherwise, finally, we can all be done this bit. By the way, I completely and utterly despise... Games that have have you make you play on a particular day or a particular date. How pointlessly pathetic is that? It's not pathetic. It's just annoying, isn't it? Right. So a little bit of dialogue is going to happen right here. But what is going to happen? We're going to come up to another missable achievement called Here You Pick, and that is for getting. Uh, we need to view basically twelve different menu items. Again, it's very easy. It's only the one specific dialogue option that we need to choose.
So, once again, we're going to choose a specific dialogue options next, and all we're choosing is Shannon turns the page. So, always going to be the bottom option, Shannon turns the page, oh yeah, Sh Shannon turns the page, I said Shannon turns the page, and what we're going to do is we're going to do this three or four times, basically, there's three items per menu, so was that, three, six, nine, twelve, so yeah. Choosing the option, Shannon turns the page four times should unlock us the here you pick. And that beautiful, that rare achievement sound, you won't have a better orgasm than if you uh, play a rare achievement sound at the same time. Trust me, it's just so super hot. Right, so again, you can pick whatever dish that you want. Now we can just uh, crack on. And there's going to be a little bit more of a scene where the guy's going to pick a squid up, but... <sighs> Again, for whatever particular reason, he walks slower than your nan, who's just had double hip and double leg surgery. Just run, you son of a bitch! We haven't got all day! Right, we've finally done though with this section, so uh, the reason it's gone completely silent, there's more music, uh, you know, scared of copyright and dropping the soap and pfft, all that jazz, not up for that, so that is why you hear nothing at the moment, but you're going to hear some nice music, we're going to head all the way back down, and we're going to return to the tugboat, and finally do our eighth and final stop before we have to do this act all over again, see, now do you know why? I was so miserable towards the end of Act 4, or completely during it.
So then this is the eighth and final stop um, along the Echo, the Echo River. And this is basically just Clara's musical. Um, so since we've gone to the dockyard, since we have clicked the option to go to the dockyard, all this bit is, is Junebug and Johnny discussing their past and future and... Are they sisters or bro brother and sister or are they buying it? Like, what, what? I don't know what they're supposed to be. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't actually know. I haven't been keeping up. But anyway, Clara's going to be all like, wah, wah. and all we got to do is just choose any dialogue option that you particularly want. It literally makes no difference. This is a dialogue only section. Sam through the dialogue section. And then, <laughs> oh, thank you, Jeebus. We can complete Act 4 before going through it all over again. Hooray. Let's get excited, everyone.
sorry, just double, I had to double check a little bit earlier on to see if it unlocked, but it actually unlocks as soon as we get to the next part. Uh, so, while our protagonists are going to Dogwood Drive, we're actually pulling them back. It's like trying to grate, you know, when someone's trying to go to, like, you know, the next class up, but they're actually really dumb, and teachers are like, well, you're going to have to stay back into the year. Oh, that's going to be depressing, isn't it? And, well, let's get depressed for another... It's going to be less than an hour this time. We're going to be staying on the tugboat this time, so we're not going to do this interlude. Click the X button, and then choose to play Act 4... All over again. And I've, I can literally see I've got the Robert Downey Jr. meme. The one where he's got a fag in his hand. Or the Ben Affleck meme where he's got a fag in his hand and he's looking all like, ugh, man, not again. So let's do Act 4 all over again. This time, like I said, no, you do have a choice, of course. You can actually replay Act 4 now and just override your choices. Or we can continue the story and replay Act 4 after the ending, just as long as you do it all on the same save file. Um, but I just do it now just to get it out of the way. Again, we're not really um, looking at stories in this particular playthrough, of course. We're just going all for the achievements, so this is why it doesn't matter. Um, but again, this one should be a lot shorter, because what we're going to do is we're going to stay aboard the tugboat at every opportunity. So it's going to be short scenes, and that'll be that. Um, so we're just going to smash through all the dialogue as per usual that we can and we'll just be completing that act for a second time. So, who ready? Have you pumped yourself with excitement juice yet? Me neither. Ah, oh, so bored. Anyway, um, remember we need to speak to Ezra. Uh, speak to Ezra. We need to speak to the musicians. Uh, we need to get the cat recording here as well. By the way, I'm not speaking much on this particular bit because I'm asleep with boredom. Sorry.
Right, so for our, for our first stop, this time what we're going to do is pick the top option all the time. So we're going to be staying on the tugboat at literally every opportunity just to get this one done quick. And again, I might just be in a bit overdramatic at how long and dragged and drawn out this is, but I really didn't enjoy this one. So again, every time we're going to choose the top option now, which says uh, we're staying on the tugboat, we're taking a nap, whatever. But we are this time staying on the tug tugboat. The Tagger. Um, the, well, these scenes are generally a lot shorter anyway than if we got out at the gas station and rum bar and stuff like that. But there are a couple of things that we have to still do. So we're inside the Mucky Mammoth. <laughs> we're not inside the Mucky Mammoth. You know what I mean. A couple of things we're doing. So we interact with the first um, prompt right there. Which is uh, for selecting the lookout. And then after this bit, we're going to be chatting with Kate. Why, right, Kate? And we are going to record Kate. Again, just press the A button to back out straight away. Now, again, no dialogue options matter. Um, I'll obviously always tell you. So if you see dialogue options appear and I haven't said anything, and you can obviously see how fast I'm going, I'm normally just smashing straight through it, as you will know, since we've already played three and a half hours of this game together. So we're going to go to the lower decks, which is on the left-hand side. And then all we're going to do, we're going to find Will, we're going to have a conversation with him. Dialogue, again, doesn't matter, so stop through as, um, uh, keep smashing through as per. And that'll be the end of this first section. On to stop two. So if you feel like having a nice alcoholic drink, this time we're not doing it. What we're going to do is just retreat to the um, uh, VHS room, or whatever it bloody is. And again, just a couple of little things. We've got a lot of videos in the back, so we're going to press the eject. Oh man, this porn's boring. It's not like it was on the phones. Uh, we're going to now choose search. And again, we can just pick any tape that we want. You want to watch butt bags? Well, that's good for you. Do you want to watch prison soapy wink wink dramas? Then that's up to you too. Um, or if you'd rather just watch um, Scheisenhausen videos. Where Germans poop on each other's chest. I don't know why that was a big thing back in the day. 
Was that even a thing? Or am I just... I'm thinking I'm just thinking of the South Park movie. I don't know. Anyway, pick whatever you want. This time, we're going to get up. We're going to eject. And the second one, for the second tape, if you want to, you can choose the one that is labeled question mark, question mark, question mark. Now, what this one is, again, if you're following the story relig religiously and you're extremely interested, you can learn about, this is the video that learn about Weaver's machinations or machinations, machinations, yeah. Um, but if you're not really that interested, smash the dialogue and we can get out of there and then we're going to head to the main deck, speak with Kate and Will and get this one done. Next, and thankfully, this time, we can stay on the board, uh, stay on the boat as the dogs. Now, the, this one is basically, it's a short scene, there's no interaction, we can just enjoy just how short it actually is. For once, I'm happy with something short. Now, George Ezra, now very Easter eggy, before he became a musician, he was going to be a card game player in a casino. This is why um, Ezra teaches us a card game. It's just fantastic at how sarcastic I am. Uh, no, uh, but we are going to choose Ezra teaches us a card game anyway. Um, now, I believe this is, yeah, this is just another dialogue only scene. So as soon as it begins, just keep smashing through any bits of dialogue you want. Yeah, we're going to do it quicklier this time. And yes, I'm sure quicklier is a word. Now.
And after a long, hard boat ride, this time what we're going to do is take a cheeky little nap. Um, now, this bit probably doesn't make a difference. If you go and forage for mushrooms again, you can just smash the dialogue quickly. Uh, but basically, we, there are two optional recordings on this boat. Um, the Mammoth at the start. And the ocean sounds that are near June Bog and uh, June Bog, June Bug and Johnny. Uh, but to, to finish this one, all we have to do is actually find Will in the lower decks and just record him sleeping. That's how you get through this one. So, speak to Big Kate by her. Cheers, Kate. Bye. Thanks very much. So again, if you want to, you can do the recording. Uh, I end up doing it just on the left hand side here. But either way. When you're done with this bit, just go inside, go all the way down to the lower decks and just record Will sleeping, which again is not creepy in the slightest because apparently when a child does it, it's innocent. But when grown adult men record children sleeping, it's pervy. Tch. Which actually, yeah, when you, when you say it like that, yeah, it doesn't sound great, does it? I'm just glad Will wasn't saying something in his sleep that he <laughs> didn't mean, like, destroy all humans. Destroy all humans. Right, so, <laughs> once again then, very much sadly, we have to now go through the whole little tugboat section to get to the central, uh, Echo River Central Exchange. Again, it doesn't matter if you decided to leave with uh, uh, Conway on the dinghy already, or stayed on the tugboat to cook. Um, but when we do stay on the tugboat, to get through to the uh, next bit, what we have to do is look at the recipe, and then we have to chat with Will, and then we basically end up back in the tugboat. So it might have actually just been easier to go straight on the tugboat with Conway right there. Um, but yeah, so you can um, record a couple of things. There's a couple of things that you can record for Ezra if you so wish. But as Shannon, we're going to pick up the recipe, or as Ezra, we're going to pick up the recipe, chat with Will, and then we have to set off into the dark tunnel again. So just get something up on your TV, get something up on your phone, because this bit is yet another sleepability bit. Oh, sleepability, that's another word.
just paused just in case uh, you could skip the cutscene or anything, but... Ah! Uh, here we go again! Although this time he does go a little bit faster, so that takes off like two minutes or so. Hooray!
Oh, man, thank God. So, thank God that bit's over with. So, 3.50, we're roughly now about an hour from completing this game. Right. Right, so, again, remember, you can speak to Flora, you speak to Conway, you can speak to Flora if you want, but we're just going to speak to Big Dashiel. And we're going to speak to Poppy. Remember, this next bit is a timed event, so remember, if you choose the arrow, the dog's going to leave with us, as Shannon, and it's going to appear in Act 5. If you choose the skull, the dog's going to stay with Conway and won't appear in Act 5. Um, but again, I, I think that's fine, since it's um, selfishness. That's, that's terrible selfishness from Conway to just turn into a skeleton and leave.
Oh man, this is so hot right now. Right, so we are now back at Sam and Ida's. This time, of course, we don't have to do the Happy Tuesday and all that jazz and go offline. So this time, what you're doing, you're just going to smash through the dialogue with the people at the table. When we speak to Johnny and George Ezra, just tell them that you don't have a quarter. And then just choose the bottom option that basically says, no, I don't have anything. Go up your mum. No, actually, don't go up your mum. That's uh, no, Nobody needs that. Uh, but basically tell them to go fudge themselves when they ask for a quarter. They're going to come back. You have to pick another dish. And the slowest man in the universe is going to appear and uh, bring us up a squid. But this time, just to, just to get this past, uh, just to get it uh, first uh, through quicker, don't waste your time, don't have a quarter, etc. And just smash all the dialogue again. Hurry up, you goddamn butthole! We got places to be, man! Nobody's this slow. I tell you what, my nan. My nan had no legs once. Actually, no, she didn't. But I reckon somebody's nan with no legs would be faster than you.
And this time then, for the final time, thank God for this. Generally, thank God for this. Um, but this time, what we're going to do is actually go onto the boat. So you can watch in the dockyard or assist Clara on the tugboat. So this time, again, we're going to be choosing the top option, which is assisting Clara on El Tug Magoni Boto. And what you have to do is Ezra, again, this bit just makes no difference. You basically DJ George Ezra in the house. Um, so you just have to pick um, any dialogue that you want. So just keep smashing through this bit, uh, bit of dialogue. You can call it whatever you want. And then you can choose, basically we're going back through the recording. So we recorded the cat, we recorded Will talking nonsense in his sleep, etc, etc. So you can just pick that. You can um, ask to play it eloquently or mega or backwards or whatever whatever you choose makes no difference Clara's gonna do all this weird stuff which does not sound like the recording of a cat at all and we're just gonna keep doing this until the scene ends again
Oh my god, we did it! Yes! That is the end of Act 4 again! Thank god! I mean, oh no, what a shame, I'd love to go through Act 4 for a third time. Don't push your luck, don't put that as a DLC title update, please. Uh, computer cardboard devs. Cardboard computer devs, sorry, got got you uh, mixed up there the wrong way around. Anyway, that's going to get us the Act 4 again achievement. Now this is another, another this next interlude, kind of another lengthy one. Um, but again, it's a very interesting one, Easter eggy and all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you are following the story, again, this interlude will take around 30 minutes if you're trying to look at all the story and all the dialogue. It'll take about 30 minutes, but this time we are actually going to play Un Pueblo de Nada. Un Pueblo de Nada, I, uh, which means, of course, um, Pablo is no more. Dead. No, I actually don't know what it means. Um, but there's a few things that we're actually going to have to do. Um, now, also, a bit, bit of an optional thing here. The developers actually made a live-action version of this interlude. And you can actually play Un Pueblo de Nada and watch the broadcast live, you know, both in-game and the live one simultaneously, if you time it correctly, of course, which is very cool. Very, very cool. So for this bit, then, it's kind of like we're at a TV station, basically. Um, we need to ch uh, use the right stick to uh, change the direction that Emily, who we are, is looking in. Smash through dialogue again. We need to use the left stick as our selection tool. And throughout the broadcast, we'll be interacting uh, by pressing the A button with people and objects all around the studio. So we're going to start off talking to Maya here. Smash through, smash through, smash through, all good. And then what we're going to do is turn around again using the right stick and interview our first person. Um, so basically, I mean, it's it's pretty unmissable. If you choose to have a look at other stuff, you can't actually interact with people. Um, and the, it'll it'll come up with dialogue saying, uh, like with the interviews, are you ready to do this? Are you ready to do that? So what we're going to do is just swing it around. We can't actually go into the um, video archive yet. We're going to swing it all the way around. Just having a little look at things, but yeah. So there we go. So as you can see there, time to start the show. So you need to just smash through all this little bit of dialogue with Big Rita Roni right now. Then when we've had a little chat with Pepperoni Rita Roni, what we're going to do is uh, we need to retrieve a tape now from the video archive. So go all the way around, and there's the video archive then, kind of like uh, the video bookshelf. So take a little look in there, and what we need to find is, um, uh, I forget, you can, <laughs> you can choose any dialogue options, alphabetical order, I just chose, and then old stuff by language. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, yeah, obviously, Un Pueblo de Nada, because that is what it's called. So, you can choose any dialogue option. You'll always end up finding it anyway. Next, you need to uh, select the tape machine, which is next to the crow in the monitor. And now, we're going to turn back around and then let Rita know. So, give uh, Rita the dialogue of a bashing of a, a life at time. No, no, you dumb. Yeah, th the controls can be a bit finicky as well. For whatever particular reason. Uh, but just <laughs> speak to Re Miss Cross Eye. That's a funny second name. Right then. Next! What we need to do, we're going to go ahead and uh, select the monitor with the crows now. I don't think we're able to pick Bob and Knob right here. Ben and Bob, Bill and Bob, Ben and Knob. Uh, no, we actually have to interact with the monitor, which is caused by the crow. Let's keep going around, keep going around. Really take my time. I think my uh, brain was quite slightly confused at this point. There we go. So, interact with the monitor. 
And then what we're going to do is actually just smash through um, with Maya. And then after this, we're going to select Rita to overhear her discussion while the video plays. So after speaking to Maya, turn around and speak to Rita. Job done. Right, now we need to check in with Bill, Bob, Big Rob, and Big Knob while uh, the interview behind us is being carried out. Um, so, yeah, again, that's just dialogue that you can just smash through. Lots of walking around in this one, huh? Yeah, lots of walking around. Right. Now, what we can do is go all the way back to the interview or the, the stage. We're going to speak to Big Ron. Oi, Ron. You look like a big lad. You look like a bad Homer Simpson, mate. So, we'll speak to him again. Smash through the dialogue, as is the purr. And <laughs> when that bit is done, we're going to go to the weather report, which is the, um, you know, cheap-ass projector right there on the right-hand side with uh, Jay and Silent Bob, Hippie and Hoppy. So, uh, so a signal of those, <laughs> Elmo and Kirano, they're going to switch on the projector. More dialogue is going to happen here. And uh, we are coming to the end, ever so slowly. And then with Hippie and Hoppy, Jane, Silent Bob are done. We're going to go back to the stage. We're going to speak to Rita. Smash through the dialogue uh, once again. Oh, and the phone's going. Right, so after this bit, what we're going to do now, we're going to chat with Slow Mo Crow, who is the crow by the monitor and the videotape. Um, and basically, we're going to get a phone call. Call is going to go on, blah, 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 blah. We're just going to have a chat with the... Uh, with <laughs> Mo, mo, mo. So there we go. So interact with Le Crow. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. What you doing? You want to go out for food later? I don't eat humans, though. Or any animal carcasses. Anyway. Uh, interact with him. And then, if you want, you can actually, after this conversation with the Crow, you can actually have a look at the um, condition of the studio, which is in a lot worse condition than it was before we started, thanks to Storm Butthole. That's a real storm. Why Why don't they do that? Why don't they name the name Storms after, like, Storm Brian and Storm Jeff? Like, why not? Eh, 
Storm genital warts. Ah, yeah, that's a funny one, and that's nah, probably because it's deadly. Oh, what they should do? Um, probably something like storm chlamydia, storm HIV. But that's not something we should joke about. So let's move on, huh? Um, right. Anyway, blah blah blah. We're just smashing through the dialogue, literally as it is for now. Um, I've obviously selected uh, Rita on stage. The, the caller will hang up. And that is going to cue the video on cave art. Uh, basically, all we're waiting for now is for the studio to go dark. Like now, there it is. <laughs> so what we're doing then, we're having a little look around. You can if you want, make some difference if you can't, if you don't want to, up to you. But what we're going to do is just have have a look at the exit, uh, because Nikki is going to pop in, and we're going to have a little conversation with Nikki as soon as she comes in, if you can see where the exit is, of course. Oh, right, there she goes, there she is, right. There we are, look. So, speak with Nikki. And finally then, for the final bits, we're going to turn all the way around, we're going to select Rita once again. And this is basically going to begin the last segment. There you go, blah blah blah. After we speak to Big Rita, Big Nicky Dicky, we're going to inspect the monitor when we hear static. Which is so should be now, it's about now, yeah, so the static's happening now. Uh, so we're going to select the monitor, and then it's going to be a broadcast from... Now, do you remember Weaver, who we spoke to at the very, very beginning of the game, in the Marquez farmhouse? Uh, who ended up being, I don't know, she disappeared, unless she was a ghost or something. Yeah. So here comes the static, there's Weaver's pirate bo broadcast, very goddamn creepy, actually. But after this, this will end, and we will unlock the achievement Un Pueblo de Nada. And we can finally move on to Act, uh, act 5 and Death of the Hurried Man. Yes. Right, so what we're going to do first, then, is get our final missable achievement. Now, can you see where these sort of raised, um, let's call them grass bumps or grass raised hills or whatever, um, are? Where there's water everywhere and you've just got the, it's like a pattern. So as you can see, the um, green going round. What we're going to do is play as the cat. We play as the cat now for the final act. Now, just like the car earlier on, this bit is quite confusing and... It, You've got to really take your time with the dragonfly here. On PC, it's going to be a lot easier because you can point and click your way there. Uh, with the controller, it's a bit harder because it's that the cursor, again, the dragonfly moves like a bitch. Anyway, what you have to do, start from that central mound, and you have to be not perfect, but you have to be sort of as, you know, on the grassy hills as you can. So go around, keep following it around. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect, but try and keep it as neat and tidy as you possibly can, anyway, on the green mounds, hill mounds, whatever. But keep walking around, keep going around. 
Don't interact with anyone just yet. This is for another miserable achievement, of course. When we get here, now we're going to head off to the right, as you can see. So again, try your best to keep it nice, neat, and tidy. And keep going, keep going, keep going. Right, smash, uh, smash through the dialogue. Press the B button there, because Ron just gets in the way, the big douchebag. Now go to the left here, as you can see. And there's another mound that we're going to finish up on. So go around. And then... Once we get to this point, the achievement should unlock. Now, as you can see, I obviously wasn't perfect. I was up, you know, in the water, up and down all the time then. So I wasn't perfect with that one, but I still unlocked the achievement. So if you feel like that run wasn't good enough, just go back to the central mound and start again. Um, otherwise, you should pretty much be good to go with that one. But that's the final missable achievement anyway. So just make sure to get that one done and you'll get the map achievement. Now, this final section of the game, it's different than what we've done in the f uh, previous four acts, but it is a very simple structure. All we have to do is navigate the cat around town and interact with all the NPCs to progress the story. That's that's it. We don't have to do anything else. You can occasionally meow at people um, during conversations. There's basically going to be like, like a glyph, like a weird shaped pattern which will appear at the bottom of the screen. So now and again, like speaking to Shannon later on, like that, just right there. Uh, you've probably just seen, maybe missed that. Um, but yes, so you can interact with that. Now, uh, but that's all we're doing then. For the next sort of three scenes, we're just going to be going around the town and interacting with people. So, um... You can interact with other things, but this is not needed. To actually progress the story, we just have to interact with the NPCs, and that's that. Um, so the choices in Act 5... the choice, the, Actually, some of the choices... It's important to note that some of the dialogue choices um, made in Act 5, they do actually affect the ending. So, uh, some of the choices you make in Act 5 will determine whether or not the protagonist will stay and rebuild or leave for unknown pastures, as it were. Um, and the final, appear uh, the final appearance of five Dogwood drivers, we finally get there, is also shaped by these decisions. So, again, it, you may have something different to me. If you do, it makes no difference. You'll still unlock the achievement anyway, but that's quite interesting to know. So, um, yeah, so like I said, all you got to do, it's a small town. All you got to do is just run around, and if you see some people, go straight up to them, smash through them, talk to them, scratch them. Stick your spiky cat penis, whatever, because that's another scientific fact, right? Cats have spiky penises. That's just, just scientific fact, like the big whale vagina thing. Um, <laughs> so if you hear cats um, thinking they're in pain outside, that's probably true, because they've got a spiky cat wiener in them. Anyway, just keep going around town for now. Um, there's literally nothing really more to say at this point. There's people up there you can go to. There is a path on the side that you can go up. Um, but basically, you can, um, when you've spoken to everyone, in fact, I, I'll obviously let you know when, when everything's good. Now, these black figurey, sh figurey, uh, black shadowy figures right there are just ghosts. So when you know that we are done with this bit, everyone, this is Five Dogwood Drive. So, we can now head to Five Dogwood Drive, and we're going to move on to the next scene. So, sorry, that was that's what I was trying to say there. When you have spoken to enough people, or done enough things throughout the um, uh, section, the um, bunch of people will get together in one part of the place, you go to them, and that is what unlocks that bit, and we get to the ne next area. But yes, this apparently is what Conway was looking for, Five Dogwood Drive. Now, to be honest, if this was your final ever delivery, you'd just be like... Mate, I'm freaking retiring. That you can, I, I am not going there. No, I've never heard of it. I'm never going anywhere. I'm retiring, bro. Up your nan. Screw you.
And once again then, so it'll just be the same then for this bit, as soon as you speak to enough people, and again, with the glyphs here at the bottom, you can keep speaking to people, but as soon as you do enough things, and as soon as you speak to enough people, um, and done enough interactions, we're going to automatically proceed to the next section, so just keep walking around town, as soon as you see any people, talk to them, go up to them, talk, it's done. Round the greer because there was a lot of dead people up here. By the way, this is the whole point of this. Then there was a, apparently what happened was a big flood um, come through, killed a bunch of people, and well, that just sucks donkey balls, doesn't it? So um, yeah, we're being nice, etc., etc. Once again, it's the same thing. We're just going all the way around town, and as soon as we've seen enough in conversations, done enough interactions, Ron's basically going to appear under the bell tower, but of course I'll let you know when, where, and how, and why, and where, and when, and how, and why we get to that part when it comes to it.
So now I do believe that we have done enough interactions. Now, now these bits, of course, are long, but they ain't no bloody Act 4 long. So we can, uh, you know, at least be thankful for that. And we get to play as a cute little cat as well. So you cannot beat it, mate. So they're dead people right there. Hello, dead people. Um, so we're just going to, this is, I think, the final interaction uh, between Big Rita and the other woman, whoever that is. So we're going to go to the left. Now, um, Ron should appear. There he is. So he is under the bell tower. So interact with the bell. And then what's going to happen, they're all going to start congregating um, next to the... Uh, ceremony. So the ceremony, it's basically a shed with two horses on it. And everyone's going to congregate over. And that's basically going to be the end of the game. Bah! We done it, girls and boys and girls and boys. Man, we done this shit, man. Well, yeah. Eventually, anyway. Now we can move, by the way. It's not an automatic thing. You actually have to move yourself, you lazy twonks. Which, of course, I thought it was an automatic thing, so I'll call myself a lazy twonk right there. Uh, so eventually, we're going to get going. Come on, cat balls. Kim in. Ah, another dead person! Run! Oh, okay. Now I realised. Oh, wait, okay. It's not an automatic thing. I'm just being silly. Let's go to the left. Everyone's going to start seeing. Interact with this. Then what's going to happen now is basically there's a, uh, the memorial for everyone's going to begin. Emily right here is going to sing the final song of the game. Again, you're not going to hear it on screen because just in case, um, you know, copyright, drop soap, get bummed, all that stuff. I, You know, j just in case. You're not going to hear it on me, but Emily has a very nice voice. Now, Emily's actually that good at singing that she managed to raise all the ghosts, the dead ghosts, all the dead people. And they all popped right in for a little, uh, for a little listen. That is the power of one's voice. God damn, that's impressive.
Right, so the final thing to do then for the main game, we're going to go back to 5 Dogwood Drive. Again, depending on the choices of whatever, I don't know how we managed to do that. But your Dogwood Drive might seem a little different, um, or look a bit different. Now, I believe it is to the left, and I think we go up. So we go, keep going left, keep going left, and then sort of go to the right here. No, we go on left. It's uh, it, it, it's a bit of a tricky. Ah, oh, there we go. Looks there. There we go. So, again, your dog would might drive may look a bit different. Depends, I think. Maybe if you give um, Cletus the dog in Act Four, uh, Conway. Sorry, not Cletus. Yeah, close enough. But anyway, this is the ending. Finally, finally, for Kentucky Route Zero. Now, we're gonna unlock the achievement. Look for me under your boot soles. That is, of course, for completing Act 5. But we've got um, one more achievement left to get. And that is just for one more interlude. Um, but, yeah, basically, that's it. Now, personally, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know your thoughts on this game. Did you think it was a very enjoyable game? Story-wise, phenomenal. As is the use with, like, Annapurna Interactive published games. But did you think it sort of dragged on a little bit too much? Personally, I think it did. I think it did, especially that those in Act 4 just took a bit. I, got. I think that's what done it for me. The first three acts were lovely, brilliantly paced, very well done. But having to do Act 4 twice was just a bit of a kick in the nut bags, really. But, um, but anyway, I'd, again, love to know your thoughts on the game. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments section below. So... Now we've just got one more achievement left. Now we have to complete Death of the Hired Man. Now, if you somehow... Remember earlier on, very early in Act 1? Um, if you didn't end up speaking to Carrington in Act 1, this final interlude will actually remain locked. But if that, that does happen, that's fine. You can actually replay Act 1. Just go to the part where you first leave the Equus Oils petrol station. Immediately go back, drive back there, meet Carrington, and then return to the map. The final interlude should then be accessible at the main menu. So, if you ended up missing it the first time, don't panic. You'll get this another way. Um, but this interlude is just an extended post credit scene, basically. What you can do is just flick through the channels with either the D-pad or the left stick. Um, what I end up doing is just uh, looking at one particular TV channel, this one. Smashing through the dialogue as quick as we can. Again, obviously, tapping the P but B button. Or you can just let it play out. Up to you. But this is it. That'll be, basically, that is the exactly, exactly last one. And that'll be the last thing we ever do in Kentucky Route Zero. It. And that's it then, guys and gals. So, finally then, after almost five hours of grueling ness, we have done it. So now you should have 24 out of 24 achievements. For me, um, even though of course you see me unlock the Happy Tuesday achievement earlier on, doing the offline method, when I went back on it, it said I only had 23 out of 24 achievements. But 
um, when I scanned on True Achievements, it said I completed the game. So if that happens, don't worry, it, it probably just needs a bit of time to realise what the hell's going on. Uh, but there you go then, guys and gals, so that is that. That is Kentucky Route Zero. I've already asked about the game, but I do hope that the guide helped as well. Ignore the 22 out of 24 there. The one thing I'd done earlier, I have shown you all 24 achievements. Um, but again, I hope you enjoyed the guide. I hope the pacing of it was okay. And if you, if you did enjoy it, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Let me know if you enjoyed it as well. Um, don't forget to check me out on my socials. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And again, a huge, big, massive shout out to everyone on Patreon who continues to support the channel. You guys and gals are just absolute legends, and it just helps me make more and more better videos as much as I can. So thank you so much. And again, thanks to everyone who interacts with me on the daily as well. And there we go then, guys and gals. So, well, I guess there's nothing left to say, except I'll see you in the next Game Pass game. Bye-bye, big love.